going on ready? Yeah. Um, what I've got, I've just got to tap on to. Um, Where's the spoon is? Hey guys. Hi Tony, how you doing? Good evening. How you doing, babe? You alright? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. Good, good. You're a bit dark tonight. Yeah, I'm going to switch that other light on. Hang on. All right, cool. All right, just... Okay, are we on? Connect. Well, I'm just connecting to the radio. So put yourself on mute for me, please, babe. And that's that. And... Good evening and good evening. This is After Dark. We are here, guys. This is an exciting time. It really is an exciting time because we have, uh, so far, we have the men in the Zoom room tonight. It's all about the men. It's all about you guys tonight. The women are in Facebook. They will have their opportunity to be in the Zoom room by themselves, but this is the night for our kings, all right? So, I want you to get comfortable, get ready to have an open, candid conversation this evening. No holes barred, we just want truth, honesty, we want to be able to grow. We've seen so many things going on in the world, um, we want to be able to grow and nurture each other. Um, as men and women, especially men and women of colour. Now that doesn't 
exclude anybody else from the conversation. But in the room, you can see we are, we're black people. All right. So, so I'm going to go for them. I'm just going to check that our Facebook feed is working. Um, some of you may know that I uh, have been on here a long time. I had to run up here, get some, because I was uh, eating. But I'm here and we are now right. Great stuff. Good, 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 good. So the, so the Facebook group is livening up. All right. So guys, good evening. I'm going to come into you each individually. Introduce yourself, a little bit about yourself, and, and then we'll take it from there. I do believe there's a few more that's coming into the Zoom room tonight. So I'm just going to go to our first person. I'm going to go to Tony. Tony's been here from the beginning. We are 10, 11 weeks in now. So you've been here from day one, working with us. So Tony, introduce yourself. Well, introduce, tell us a little bit about yourself and good evening. Well, good evening. Thank you very much again for inviting us, everyone. Um, my name's Tony. I live in uh, South London, originally from Northwest London. Um, I've been married twice. I'm age 51, be 52 next week. Um, I work as a school teacher and behaviour mentor. I also work for a charity called the 100 Black Men of London, which I mentor uh, black children aged between 9 and 16 every Saturday morning, which we currently do uh, via Zoom link. Uh, but normally we do that in a, in a classroom in central London. And I'm single. <laughs> But you're willing to mingle, you, you are actively seeking, right? Yeah. Good, 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 good. That's what we want to hear. So this is Tony, guys. This is Tony. So I'm going to jump over to, I'm going to go down. So I'm going to kind of sandwich you because we've got Johnny here as well from America. So we, we go, we're going global tonight, guys. All right. So I'm just going to bring Johnny in. If you unmute yourself, lovely. Hey Johnny, how hey, are you guys? Hey, how you doing? It's, oh. it's good to be in the Zoom room. Um, for those of you that don't know me, I know Yvonne um, from my time that I lived in the UK from 2010 to 2013. Um, so we met through uh, her family and through ministry, and um, it's just great. My name is again Johnny Meyer. I live in Fredericksburg, Virginia, which is about an hour outside of Washington, D.C. I've been married for uh, 16 years. Um, I have five children, three boys and two girls. And um, I mean, I was listening in on the discussion last week and um, I felt, you know, it'd be great to be a part of it as well. And uh, um, I've worked for the U.S. government, um, which is, explains why I spent three years in the UK, but I've also have lived in and served in over 40 countries all over the world. So I have a, you know, huge perspective on different cultures and um, because of my time that I've spent in other cultures. So it's just great, great to be a part of it and um, to give you my perspective on relationships. So love you guys. It's, it's great to be here. Thank you. Thank you for being here as well. We really appreciate you taking time out to be with us this evening. So those of you who have been following us, we, um, we had a guy called Patrick Solomon who um, was with us, but now um, Patrick's gone to work. So Patrick was also married, but gave great perspective um, on a broader view of relationships. So Johnny is here today to, to help him from that perspective, but also Patrick may just make it tonight. He will be late and he's the only person that I'm gonna allow into the Zoom room after the cutoff time because he has uh, been here. So here we go in some mute, we've got some more people coming in. So let me just go over to my friend, um, Kellyon Ross, hello, how are you? I'm good, thank hello. you. Yes. Okay, yeah, good, good, Josh, good, good. Just, hold on one minute. Josiah, we're gonna come into you. Just give us one minute, all right? Nice one. Okay, Kellyon. 
Yeah, um, yeah. I'm. I live in Harrow. Uh, I was married before. Got two children. One sixteen. Uh, one is fifteen. And um, I don't know. <laughs> I've got speechless. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> I know it. That's weird, isn't it? <laughs> Not in many words. <laughs> I'm a drama instructor. I'm a singer. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Security. Yeah. Oh, Jesus, yeah. I'm, I'm just, I'm just a guy that is very happy to share knowledge and also to learn. And obviously, um, especially with our people, uh, I think it's very important that we do, um, put ourselves in a position of having these kind of conversations because we need to be able to rectify, nonetheless, um, dissect what's happening in, in our community. So, yeah. I, and I'm, so I'm a young elder. Um, that's looking to you know be an example to a lot of uh, the youth of today. Fantastic, fantastic! Thank you so much for being here, Kelly. On you as well have been here from the beginning, from episode one, and um, we're building and we're growing. Just to let you guys know, last week we hit a thousand views on the show. Just so it, you know, it's okay. It, I know that people get millions. But this is a new show and we've got a thousand. So I'm really, really pleased at what we're doing and people are finding it interesting. So I'm going to bring in Josiah. Hello, hello, hello. You're going to unmute yourself. Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm wonderful, wonderful. That's Glad good, that's good. Tell us a little yeah. bit about yourself. Um, so uh, Carl's brought me in. He literally messaged me earlier and he told me to join the group. Um, and it gave me a brief overview of what it's about, and it sounded good. Um, so my name is Josiah. I'm single about seven months now. Uh, living, I'm from Birmingham, but I'm staying in Oxford at the moment. Um, and he says he just went, this, today's show was about, and correct me if I'm wrong, just about letting guys explain what they want or expect and stuff. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, okay. Yeah. So like, from Mike's. Um, do you want to, was he going to say something? Sorry. I was going to say, yeah, today's a, an open, candid conversation about right. what men want. Because one of the questions that was asked last week, and it was, mm -hmm. what do men actually want? And we didn't really kind of get the chance to really unpick that. Yet. Right, right, okay. We've got questions. We've got the ladies who are in Facebook. So they are going to be asking questions so when you see me looking down that's yeah 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 okay what's going on in facebook and so yeah. i ask those questions so that's what okay okay i can see now guys i can see some some of you guys who are on facebook who were supposed to be in the zoom room um do you need me to to put the link in so that you can come in to the space that has been made available to you we want you to feel okay. really comfortable, guys. So we don't want to pressure you, but we want to hear from you. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. It sounds. Let's, let me just do this and put the link in this week. I Sorry, think... man, you good? Go yeah, yeah, saying Carl's right. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, man, great. Yeah? Nice yeah, one. man. Yeah, so I'm just going to put that in the, into Facebook. Men come in. <laughs> right. So you've, I'm asking you very nicely and I'll come inside the room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sure okay. everyone understood that. <laughs> okay. So let's get onto this conversation. So mm -hmm. we want to find out. So the first question is, mm -hmm. the first question that I have for you guys is, um, Right, so in terms of dating, right? Yeah. We'll start there and then we'll work our way yeah. So in yeah. terms of dating, what are you looking for in mm -hmm. a partner, a woman? What is it that you are looking for specifically? So for me, what I'm looking for, like my, what I want has changed over the years and what I expect, to be honest. Um, as a, I'm 34 now, and like all my sort of playing days are sort of over. Like, you never want it to be over, but it's, it's over now. So what I look for in a woman is like stability, 
loyalty and a woman that knows herself and knows what she wants as well. Um, and it sounds a bit cliche, but it's not like a lot of people say, I know what I want and I know what I'm looking for. I know what I expect, but they don't know what they want or what they want. So a girl that knows what she wants, what she's looking for and is not messing about basically. She's not going to say one thing and be doing another thing. Like she's down to the T. And it's very hard to find that, as crazy as it sounds. Um, like the girls will say, yeah, I'm, I just want a guy that's loyal or communicates and he's, he's, real, he's real with me, tell me what he tell me his needs. But as soon as you start telling them what you want or being, they might say, they might not like it, but you're just being real. Do you know what I mean? As soon as you start being real with them, Oh, it's too real. Uh, so you, that's not what you want. Do you know what I mean? You want a guy that doesn't say nothing. So it's stuff like that. So I need a girl that says what she wants and actually means it and is happy to grow with me as well. And we can share the same sort of goals and paths. So if a girl says, I want two kids, I want to get married. And then I start talking about kids and then she's like, doesn't want to talk about it. Then that's not what you want. Do you know what I mean? So I need a girl that matches what I want. And he's on the same page. I don't want to have to convince her to be on that page. And it's hard to get a girl that's ready to know what she wants and actually get a commit to that. So girls might, girls, if a girl doesn't want kids or she wants kids, she might not say she wants kids for fear of scaring someone off. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's not her being herself, you know what I mean? So it's like, and you can see, well, I want a girl to be, say, say with me as well, I need to be myself and open. So things like that, that's all I look for more than looks or body now more than anything. Because as, as shallow as that, that sounded, I just want a girl that speaks her mind, tell, tells me what she wants. Here's what I want. And either says yes or no. Do you know what I mean? And then we go together. So at my age of 34, that's what I'm looking for now. Like stability and loyalty and clarification out of girl. Okay, this is going to be very interesting because mm -hmm. we're 34 years old, so we're going to get a completely different perspective to what we were having. Um, Why? Okay. And, and it's good. It's good. Mm -hmm. um, because the, the men that we've had in the room have been mm -hmm. slightly older. So well, okay, okay. This is going to be really good. And as a matter mm -hmm. of fact, I think I might make a phone call and ask somebody that I know very well to come in mm -hmm. as well as because you are the age because you're around the same age and i think yeah, it, yeah. it would be good to do that so i'm mm -hmm. gonna tony were you putting your hands up to say something yeah so i'm gonna jump over to tony whilst okay, tony cool. thinking, i'm gonna make a little call and i'm gonna call someone <laughs> to come yeah, in yeah. <laughs> okay cool conversation really going all right yeah 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 all right tony come in okay so i understand what josiah is looking for um so for those of those who, who don't know, I'm 51, Josiah's 34. Um, I've been married twice and I can mirror some of what Josiah is looking for. The woman that says yes and means yes. The woman who says no and means no. And the woman who says maybe because she isn't sure. And that is, it, that is to me, that is the, one of the biggest problems finding a woman that you are talking about Josiah because infinitely in all my years I've always found it difficult always you know women I've lived with for 16 years still continually would say yes when they meant no no meant they were, when they meant yes and maybe when they meant evil or the other and and you could never get that right you you know you think you know your woman and you know, you're hoping that every decision you make is going to be the right one, but it's a very difficult thing to master. And Patrick's in the house, my good friend Patrick. Hope you're well. You're looking good, my friend. Loving you, how I see. Always coordinated, our Patrick. Um, but yeah, I mean, in terms of what I'm looking for in a woman, it's very simple. And I, I should precede that by saying, generally, with us men, we're very simple we're logistic creatures and we kind of know what we want so we want some cases a woman who can cook not not me 
not me primarily because I'm a cook for myself. I'm veg, I'm vegan, so I cook for myself. But a lot of men will say, I want a woman who cooks. I want a woman who looks nice when they go out. A woman who pe- pays attention to her, you know, um, just good health. Um, I want a woman who, you know, some some guys will say, I want a woman who's, who wants children or for other people like myself. We don't want a woman who's looking to have children. I don't want any further children. Some men may say, I want a woman who has children or has had children, therefore has had experience. Or some guys will say, I don't want a woman with any children. I don't want that baggage. So there's lots of different things in there to unpack in terms of what men are looking for. But we're quite simple. We can say, you know, within... 10 things we're going to say, we like a woman who travels. We like a woman who likes R&B music and reggae music. We like a woman who can crub up against a wall and throw it down when she needs to and all them things. But it's very simple. We're very logistic guys. We, you know, we kind of go, right, okay, these are our likes and our not likes. For women, and obviously women will get their time to respond to this comment. Those, and, and I did hear this at the tail end of our conversation last week. Women's wants are way more um, explicit and way more diverse. You know, whereas a man might say he wants 10 things, he might even go as far as saying that he got 20 things. By the time a man's got 20 things to say he likes in a woman, a woman will force out with about 150. On, on you. So, so what we're going to do today, I have my pen, I have plenty of paper I'm taking <laughs> As always, so what we are going to do today is we are going to categorize and be very clear about what you guys want, right? Because the women, we're going to do the same thing for the women next week, and then we're going to put this all together and see where we can work this thing out. Because the one thing that we all have in common is that we want to be in relationships. And that's the commonality that we all have for whether female or male. What I don't want to get into is, oh, you guys want this and you guys want that. What we want to do is to see where we can become compatible. If there's any compatibility between male and female so that we can move forward and progress in our relationships. All right. So um, this is where we're at. So so this is good. So there's been a few comments. There have been a few comments. Um, um, right, so Lolly Bailey's saying, you're, you're both right, and she's saying she can't take people that don't say what they mean because um, she takes everyone at their word. And, and there are some people like me, I'm quite a literal person. So if you say it's A, then it's A. If you say it's B, it's B. I, I will take you at your word. And then once that starts to go off, then that's where confusion, and then I'll ask questions. And sometimes, you know, men don't like the questions that are asked because they're too direct. But that's another thing, right? So we're not going to go there. Right, so um, we've got lots of good evenings. Good, good evenings. The Dan, Dana, uh, the Dan Dada has arrived, Mr. Patrick Solomon. We're going to just say hello to you shortly. Um, like uh, JJ saying, talk your truth, Tony. Talk your truth, absolutely. So... Barbara Kahneman is saying, speaking about myself, I have heard guys say that women say one thing and mean another, but I have always been someone who is straight down the line. My yes is yes and my no is no. Over time, I have made it even clearer because of guys saying women don't know what they want. Um, So she's saying that she's very, very clear. What I'm going to say to that is also as well, as Josh Josiah has said, He's coming from a 34-year-old's perspective. And I think that over time, I think Tony mentioned it, we change. Things change. The things, our expectations change. And so sometimes it's like, yes, we say that we want this. But then as time goes on, we mature a bit more or circumstances in life happen. Then we actually think, well, actually, that's not what I want. Actually, what I want is this. So I think it's clear that as human beings, we do that. And that's okay, because that's about us evolving and our evolution, right? So, guys, we're going to... Ladies in the Zoom room, 
Right. Oh, there's a question to you, Josiah. I'm going to give you the question, then I'm going to go to um, Patrick quickly, then I'm going to bring Johnny in, and then I'm going to come back to you. So I'm going to give you a chance to think about the answer that you're going to give. So here's a question for you from Ruth Carter. She says, to Josiah, are you looking for a girl or a woman, as you referred as your reference was to a girl when you spoke. So I'm wondering if a woman could be what you're looking for, who can give you the things, or, or give you the things that you're looking for, such as stability extra, as girls are still getting their affairs in order, maybe. So that's something for you to think about. Is it a girl or is it a woman? I'm gonna jump in to Mr. P, if you wanna unmute your mic. Sir, good evening, good evening. We haven't seen you for a few <laughs> Hello. Hello, hello, hello. How are you? Ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Yes. How's things? Good. It's very good. We're glad to have you here. Yeah, it's a bit of a speed, but I got here in time. <laughs> Made it on time, which is great. It's great. It's great. It's great. Thank you for being here. I'm sure you're going to have some good input over this evening's conversation. Now, guys, what I'm going to say to you is if you disagree with what another guy says, be open and candid to say it. We're not having arguments here, but what we are doing is we want to open up the conversation. You've got to make, you've got to know, gentlemen, that I'm a, I'm a married man and with a difference. I've been married 38 years. And I'm still with the lady and it's going smooth. The only thing I've got left to get in my life is one of these. Porsche 911. And I'll tell you something, the lady knows it too. Mm -hmm. It must be the time to get it. <laughs> she knows it too, right? Okay. <laughs> All right. As, a, as a gentleman, you can't... You, hey. Make, make, make a start, make a start first before I jump in, you know? Mm -hmm. All right, so Johnny, we're gonna come over to you. The same question in terms of what a man, what is it, what were you looking for? And you would, I mean, you've been married for 16 years, so it would, may have been different back then to what it is now, but you're seasoned. So you must be able to give some advice um, as to, what a man should maybe be, maybe the word should is not a good word, but what a man should be looking for. So I, I was listening to Josiah and I noticed, you know, some of the things that he was looking for. Um, so he's 34. When I got married, I was 32. My wife was 22. Um, so there's a bit of an age gap. So I was actually, at 32, at a, I was already established in ministry. So I was looking for a godly woman, for one. Um, so it was important for me to find a godly woman. And of course, at, even at that age, I mean, even studying to find, studying the Bible to find or, or talking to um, wise men that I would always get counsel from and older mar married couples. So I would talk to older married couples. I would read books about marriage, those kind of, I wanted marriage. Um, just, just as a backdrop, I want, I want Josiah to understand because I heard him say that, that he, the playing stage is over. So just to give you some background on me. So before I was married, I was 28 years old when I gave my life to Christ, but be previous to that, all I did was run the streets. Um, I, was, uh, I was molested at 12 years old by an older woman. So I was actually thrusted into uh, a lifestyle of promiscuity from the age of 12. So all I knew was sex with a woman or move from one, go to the next. Even though, even though in my house, I was, I was from a two parent household, right? But I was influenced by uh, either my circle in the neighborhood, I grew up in Washington, DC. So my circle in the neighborhood, I grew up there. Uh, 
And so I was influenced by a lot of different things. I saw my older older brothers, like my first my first introduction to pornography was was I was probably like 12 or 13 or maybe even younger than that. Um, my older brothers who were in and out of jail, I would see them and I would see how they treated their women, those kind of things. Now, granted, I never put my hands on a woman. So, but it doesn't negate the fact that, that, you know, women to me were just, okay, somebody I'm with, especially when I, when I got hurt by a woman, when I was loyal, I was very young, a teenager. I was loyal, got hurt by a woman. And what that did was it, 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 it put in my mind, look, I'm never going to get hurt by a woman again. So what I would do, I would stay with you just for a little bit and move on to the next one. So I played the game like really hard for many years. Didn't grow up in church for many years until, until I got into some trouble right before, right before I turned 28. And that's what led me to Christ. But it, it was actually um, a situation with a woman that, that led me that way. So I had two children out of wedlock, two children previous uh, to my marriage. So I have three children with my wife now, but I had two children previous to that. But even prior to that, you know, I found myself even in situations where I got to get a girl pregnant, she have a, an abortion. And, I, and to be honest, I can't tell you how many times that happened. So I probably should have 50 children. But I'm just being, I'm giving you an honest perspective to let you know at that time, I had no clue what type of woman I wanted. Because my, my, my view of a woman was this woman that, that convinced me, you know, my first sexual experience was with a woman, 21 years old or more, and I was 12 years old. So, so my innocence was taken from me. So my view, my view of women were, was skewed, even though I had a positive woman in my mother, uh, in my household. So my views of a woman changed when I gave my life to Christ and on October 12, 2000. And then I started to see, started to see godly women. I started to see, talk to other godly men to understand the type of woman that I needed. But even, but even, even in that, even in gaining knowledge through books and, and wise counsel, it still was not enough. So once, once, once I found my wife, even being married for 16 years, I didn't, you still don't know everything you want from a woman. But one of, one of the things I, I, I discovered, and I was hearing the, hearing the brothers talk about what they want from a woman, men are natural, natural cultivators. What are you willing to, what are, what are you willing to add to a woman once, once you get that woman? What are you going to do once you get her? Because once you get her, you know, my brother's been married for 38 years. I'm pretty sure what his woman was, she wasn't 38 years ago. And I'm pretty sure what she is now, he contributed to it. He added to it. Yeah, a woman is, is supposed to add to us. But as, le as we lead our women, we're supposed to add something to them. So, so what I'm saying is as, as we evolve, and what I noticed, like even when I got married, was this. I, I noticed how selfish I really was. Marriage to me showed me how selfish I really am because I still, it, it, in the early stages and even, you know, as we went on, I still wanted to, I, I remember the single days and I wanted to be single. I heard the, the brothers talk about, you know, going on boys trips last week. And, and, and my brother, I think Tony, he clarified that he wasn't talking about going out every week. He would say maybe, you know, once a year type thing. But if, if, if your desire is to go out every week, then something is wrong. That you, you don't really want a woman, you want a girl, because a woman is not going to go for that. And, and wanting a straight shooter, Josiah, and I'm going to finish with this. A woman that, that's a straight shooter, and, and I have one of those. Sometimes she's going to say some stuff, man, you, you don't want to hear. And, and, and are you going to shift from man to boy? Because when you shift from man to boy, like, like we got a president that shifts from man to boy. He pouts. He's a man child. 
right? Do you want a, a woman, and I like that question from the sister, do you want a woman or a girl? Because a girl might, she might, she might let you do what you want to do. Or she might just take care of you and, 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 and not desire anything. But a woman, a woman wants to be added to. And it's, it's, it's the responsibility of the man to cultivate that. So if you want a certain thing in a woman, don't, don't look at the woman. You got to look at yourself. Because God put something in you to add to that woman. So... The choice is, so the question you might have to ask yourself, do you really want a woman or do you want a girl? Or are you willing, and are you willing to change your perspective of your, because we, we have our own perspectives on what we think we want. But it's not until you actually get that one that you, you notice, okay, there's some stuff about me that I, and, and we always have to look at us and you know, Men tend to, to look at others. This brother doing this. this. No, we got to always keep the finger this way because, because the change starts with us. And, and, and we got that one thing that, that, that sometimes we don't, we don't, we're not really telling the truth. That pride will get in the way. We, you know, I've had to po apologize to my wife a thousand times because I was completely wrong. But you know, I didn't want to admit it in the first, in, in the beginning. But I was always when I was completely wrong, I had to humble myself and and, and apologize. And I think that's it, it marriage is a tool to to really, really sharpen you. Uh so first of all, you have to what do you really want? And sometimes to be honest, we don't know what it is. Okay, right, guys. I know Tony wants to come in. Hold that, hold that thought, hold it, hold it. Because this, <laughs> there's lots of going on here. Uh, Johnny, right, so the women are saying amen, amen, amen to your comments. Um, they say, where can we find one like you? <laughs> That's what they're saying. Um, Pauline is saying it's so important to know each other who, uh, whatever you want in a relationship, which if you don't know what you want in a relationship, it will be doomed for failure, i.e. you didn't know she doesn't want children, etc. And whilst you're with him or her, you've missed out on what you could have had with another partner if he or she does not want to discuss. So that is a red flag. Um... Johnny, you're, it's a kind of man who's understanding what a woman wants and needs. Um, there's lots and lots of comments here, but there is one for you, Tony. So that, and that's why I wanted you to hold that thought. Um, the comment is, Tony Cox, okay, so you can say in your experience then, right, because as a, as a big... And, as big and bad as you is, you could never get through the world of women out there to really know. Oh, so basically, because sometimes, you know, the, the messages come in and it's kind of from a perspective of something that was said. So from my understanding, basically, Barbara is saying that's in your experience, but you haven't experienced all the women in the world to really know all the women in the world. I think that that's what, Barbara, you can message and say if that's correct, um, but I think that that's what she was saying. So Tony, you can come in and then we're gonna say good evening. And we're gonna bring in Josiah. We're gonna say good evening to Theo because we've got Theo in the room, as the Zoom room as well. And then we're gonna go to Mr. P. So Tony, come in. So uh, let me address uh, Barbara very quickly because I did think uh, I think she may have responded to something I said about um, a lot of women not meaning what they say and saying what they mean. Um, Yvonne, can you put yourself on mute? Because every time someone else is talking, you're getting an echo. That's it, brilliant. Um, and so I actually have responded to Barbara in the chat to say that it's a generalization. And you're absolutely right, Barbara. I cannot possibly know all women. And when I generalize about women, it, it, it can only be the women that I've met and the women that people I know have met. You know, I, I, listen, I'm, a, I'm one of eight siblings in my family. I know a lot about what 
goes on in, in relationships because my family is huge. When we have get togethers, there's over a hundred, easy. And every time we have our get togethers, yeah, we hear the stories, he did this, she said that, blah, blah, blah. And there's a lot of, well, he said that, but what he really meant was he, he meant that. And she said that, but what she really meant was this. And that's what I'm, I'm getting at, Barbara, is that, you know, ultimately, sometimes we get mis, misunderstood. And women are very easy to get misunderstood because I think they hold back with some of the things that they say. And so if instead of saying something that they know will cause hurt, they'll say the opposite and expect you to accept it. Um, but I'm, I'm generalizing and it cannot be everyone. I'm referring back now to Johnny. Um, Johnny made some absolutely amazing points. I'm with you um, quite on, on that. And it kind of toys in with some I've mentioned previous weeks about men changing, women changing every, you know, sort of 10 years. And anybody who knows me will say, I've always been of the belief that relationships, I think, should be given a 10 year span. And at 10 years, you get an option to either carry on or say, I've had enough. Instead of this, let's jump in and two minutes later, you, you jump out. Because we got way too many of those. You know, my first marriage lasted three years. My second marriage lasted 10 years and that was a 16 year relationship. So I've seen it from both sides. And what I wanted to address with what Johnny said was when you can, when you get to a point in your life, you get to certain points, you understand what you did wrong as a youth. Yeah. So obviously at 20, you can't apologize to a woman about what you've done because you ain't lived. You ain't lived at 20. At 30, you kind of are getting there. At 40, you really truly are, in some cases, you're there. By 50, me, you really know what you want. But I look back at my marriage with when I got married at age 30. It was decent years. I had my Playboy years before that. But at 30, I got married, thought it was the one. But I made mistakes. And if I could go back 20 years, I would say I should I could have made different, I could have changed things. That's not to admit. That was all my fault. It wasn't all my fault. But what I am saying is I could have handled things differently. If I go back to my marriage, when I got married second time round, I got married at 40. So you see a trend? At 40, that marriage went 10 years. And believe it or not, I know I've made mistakes. I made many mistakes, but that was a 16 year relationship. And any man who tells me they've had a 16 year relationship and they haven't made a mistake is a liar. So we all make mistakes and age and experience gives us the opportunity to look at things that we've done in the past and say, you know what, that was a real stupid bum ass move that you did then and you could have done it differently or you should have done it differently. And I'm at that point now where I look at things and I'm like, okay, the next woman I know, I, that comes into my life, I know what I want and I'm hoping that she knows what she wants and we just get on and gel straight off the bat and we get on with our life. You know, you and I, uh, Yvonne, we had a wonderful uh, virtual date. So you kind of got to know me and I got to know you. And it was like, you know what? Yeah, I know that this woman knows what she's about and you can kind of tell what I'm about. So you could tell all the women what Tony Cox like because you've had a virtual date with me and I've, I've spilled my heart out. And I'm, I'm honest as anything, you know, I will tell anybody everything about me without lies. And, you know, as Johnny alluded to, you know, I go away every year with the boys. We go away for four or five days. It's a boys thing. Boys like to do that. We like to spend time with each other. Um, this Thursday, seeing as we've got the opportunity to join up with six people, all the boys are joining up together for a boys' night out, yeah, in the park, in Crystal Palace, this, this Thursday. Because we have not had this for a long time. And we are gagging to get our boys together and talk. Go ahead, Yvonne. Yeah, and I'm gonna gate crash. <laughs> <laughs> you say it's only boys, I'm coming down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be one of them women. 
you, you think that you can have fun without us? No, no, there's no fun going on. No, no, no. <laughs> thank you for that. Thank you. For that. Crystal Palace, you say, okay, thank you. <laughs> I'm, just, mate, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Just to, just to go through, there's one thing that um, Harita said. She said she agrees with Tony that people misinterpretate, and they do. Language is a thing that we have to learn to start to communicate more effectively because sometimes we think we are saying something but actually we're not giving anything out in in that in our communication which can be frustrating to the other person so that is something to be mindful of um kim ramsey says i feel like women need to be straight with men set the boundaries early so there is no misunderstanding uh we too mature we're too mature to be playing games. We have to be honest with each other. And I agree with that. Um, um, we're going, hold on. Barbara say, oh, okay. So Barbara's coming back for you, um, Tony. She said, the woman, the comment about the women holding back or kind of going along with certain things or, or so not to hurt feelings, etc. I've seen that myself in some women. So, I give that, I'll give you that one, Tony, she says, she's giving you that one. Right, so, um, and again, Tisha Braid is saying, love that, Tony, you got to a place where you wanted to be married. But before that, what was you on? Okay, yeah, what was you on? When the green light is on, then what are the signs us women can, so that us women can be sure that men are looking for a long-term relationship. So Tony, I want you to hold that. I'm going to come back to Josiah because there was that question from Ruth and then I'm going to go to Theo. Okay, so Josiah, do you want to come in? You can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you loud. Yeah. Okay, so I just wanted to say um, that when I refer to a girl, I do mean a woman. I don't actually mean like a girl and the difference between a woman. It's just how I speak. Um, I refer to as guys and girls but I do mean a woman when I say a girl that's all I wanted to clarify I'm not actually looking for a girl as in a younger or a mind frames I still like girl I do mean women when I say a girl that's all if that makes sense ah. what age would be your your kind of uh, remit Josiah catchment age now um, I'll say probably like 28 upwards because I'd say yeah about 28 up to I don't know I'm pretty open ain't it all right, let's let's get a bit specific though, because mm -hmm. the one thing the one thing is when you want something, you have to become more intentional. So you're saying to yes, like yeah. twenty eight to I'd say thirty eight, thirty nine, thirty nine. Yeah. Are you mm -hmm. looking for a woman who wants to have children? Yes. Right. So that yeah. is yeah. the thing, ladies. Mm -hmm. Lady, I'm just mm -hmm. saying because we've got people. Yeah. Ladies, he yeah. wants children. So if you know you don't want children stop looking panda man okay yeah because <laughs> i think as well what was, like, what, what the other guys are saying like spot on and then they've been through a lot more than me and some of the experiences are sound great and the stories are amazing it's good to hear from the older guys and the guys that have been married and stuff so it's, it's great to hear mm -hmm. and i think like myself i sort of became in a relationship where like the girl was stunning so I was sort of like just going with it and it wasn't the same in my mind but now i realize I was doing what I don't want in other women. Like, I don't want to just say something that I don't mean just to get through. But when someone says, that's guy Johnny, uh, if you want a sharpshooter, you've got to, really, got to deal with it. Like, I had a sharpshooter, so I sort of got um, counselling and therapy to help me with my emotions and express myself better, okay. which helped a lot. And so I became that sharpshooter as well. But when I became the sharpshooter, like, the partner didn't like it so it's like you tell me what you should do and talk more but when they do you're not used to it it's like oh it's a bit too much so that's what I mean like when girls say they want something when they get it they don't want it do you know what I mean and that's sort of like what I mean now when a girl says she wants this or she's looking for that I need to know that yes means yes and knows me no no means no because I know myself now like through therapy and counselling what I want and what ne what I need and what I'm actually looking for now. So there's no 
on the fence with me. I'm yes or no now. So I want that as well. And that's what, I'm, that's what I mean when they're looking for a girl. And is that, when you say sharp shooter, is that mm. what you mean that you know what you want? Or is that something else? Yeah, so someone that doesn't mean, so someone's not going to uh, beat around the bush to save feelings. You know what I mean? They don't, they're just sharp. Not intentionally, but that's how they speak. They're not, they're straight to the point and direct. And some men, they don't, like you said, they don't like the questions. <laughs> they don't like the questions. The hide are uh, just on me all the time, but that's what I want, and that's why I'm like now as well. So it's good to have sharpshooters because someone who's not going to ask or going to be too polite to say feelings, it's it's doomed. Like you need people that are straight with each other, which works. Mm -hmm. I hear that makes sense. Thank you for your honesty. Thank you mm -hmm. for your honesty. And I believe the ladies are loving your Birmingham accent as well. Oh, uh, I thought I was hiding it. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's right there. It's raw. raw. It's lovely. <laughs> Don't hide it. Be you. Be you. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to bring Theo in, then I'm going to come to some questions, and then we'll go back to the panel. So, hello, Theo. Do you want to unmute yourself? Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, Can, Theo. can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear. Okay, good. Right, so from, from what you've heard, just introduce yourself, let people know who you are first. Well, I'm Theo Manderson. I'm a radio presenter on Premier Gospel Radio. Um, been married for this, this duo, so 16 years. 16 years, but we celebrated 11 years last week, Wednesday. Okay. So you've been together for 16 years, married for 11, is that right? Oh, we've been together for 17 years. Okay. But my wife's gone in, so we did the two, we had two weddings. So we did the traditional one 16 years, and then 11 years ago, we did the right. Island, Island, English one, whatever you want to call it. Okay. All right, so Theo, you're new to the group. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So welcome. From, your, from what you've heard since you've been in here, what is your, your thoughts on what's been said? I, I don't, I'm just catching bits of it, so I don't know the actual question or what's the one been. Okay, so the question, question was, what do men want? What are they looking for in a woman? Because last week we had uh, a, lady, a, a young lady called Shalomi who asked the question, what do men want? What, what do they want? Um, so that, that women can have a better idea of what men are looking for in a woman for a long-term marriage relationship because i think most of us in the group the women and the men are of a certain age i think josiah is probably the youngest in the group which is fantastic okay. so we want to know what it is because we want to join partnerships not i don't like to use the word settle down because settling is not a great word but to have that union of of you know togetherness oh, marriage. Oh, men, well i don't know about all the guys i haven't heard the story but what I'm looking for is someone that's honest. Honest with themselves, not just honest, but honest with themselves. Know themselves, have something what they're looking for and trying to have a goal. That's what I, that's what, I don't know about all men, but that's what I was looking for. Someone that's honest with themselves, know themselves. And knows themselves. Yeah. What, what does that look like? So, like, okay, my wife, for instance, she's a teacher. And she, that's what she wanted to be, and that's what she that's what was her goal was. And she and she's you know, a woman with integrity, honest, you know, and that's that was that that's what made that's that made for me what I'm looking for. Someone that's got integrity, that's honest with themselves, and, and is driven. I like women that's driven. Because okay. if to me, some not all women, some women are not driven, they're quite happy just to settle for what they've got, settle where they're at. And, and just go with the status quo and not trying to push themselves out of their comfort zone. But just have a goal and have, a, have something, have a purpose. Someone with a purpose, you have a purpose. You can't just say, I'm looking for a husband and that's, that's your purpose in life. I just want to get a husband and that's it. And then what? You get the husband and then what? Mm -hmm. You got to have a purpose. So someone with a purpose. Someone with a purpose. Mm -hmm. Right. One of the things that was said is that women don't know what they want or they want a whole host of things you're nodding come yeah. in tell, tell me what you think about that Just have a tick box. box a tick box Most women have a tick box of what they expect from their man he needs to be this he needs to have that he needs to be doing this and i say what about the tick box about yourself what are you bringing to the table 
you can have a tick box for men. You can say you want a man to be tall, to have money, working, doing this. But what are you doing? What are you bringing to the table? That is that's talking about honesty, looking at yourself. It's all good looking outwards and saying, I want this. What about you? Okay. I like that. I, I think, Tony, do you like that? Because I think you kind of, <laughs> kind of agree with what you're saying, kind of. Yes, sir. Amen, brother Phil. I'm, I'm 100% behind what you just said. The tick box about yourself. There's a certain young lady who's commented in the group that she's been 12 years without a date or without a man. And I'm like, 12 years? That's fussy, really? man. She's you fussy. Be, it, 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 somebody, somebody needs to be looking at themselves if you've yeah. got 12 years without a man. <laughs> she's fussy. That's what it is to me. You're fussy. You want, you want too much. There's too much criteria. Amen, Looking brother. for this perfect man, perfect, whatever it may be, I don't know. There's no one that's perfect, so you would be looking forever. You're on mute, Michelle. Yvonne, on your, you're on mute. I am. I always forget about that. Right, so you're saying that she's fussy. Right, okay. <laughs> What's going to happen is this evening, this is how we're going to, how we're going to do this, right? Because mm -hmm. there's so much comments on here. It's really hard to keep up and I want you guys to keep talking. Would you guys mind in the next maybe 20 minutes of you guys talking that the, we let some women into the group? And this will be done next week as well. Because I think that we need these conversations and we need to, people to be able to be reactive or responsive to the things that have been saying there and then. And I think the women are up for that. Um, guys, are you up for that? So what will happen next week is that we will reverse it. The women will come in and they will say what they want. And then you guys will come back in and then give your points of view. Because I think th this is all about dialogue here and us having this good dialogue. So we know exactly where we are. So ladies, we're going to give 15, 20 minutes. You've got the link in the thread. Get ready to come in one two three four five six seven we've got seven men so i'm gonna make it equal there is room for seven women right if you know you've got something to say i don't want the women who are gonna just gonna come and sit you must have something to say something to contribute to this conversation all right so i know that uh, and Tony, you've been you've been in this conversation. You've been in the thread, so this is good, guys. We are actually on Facebook as well. So if there is something in the thread that you want to respond to, feel free to do that. Kellyon, how you doing? You're muted. You're muted. I sorry about that. Yeah, I know. I've been a bit quiet. Um, obviously, listening to the guys. And I'm just a little bit tired as well, so forgive me. I know, because you've been working really hard as well, so I know that. So you are forgiven, you are forgiven, but shake up yourself. Come on, brother. Come on, shake up yourself. Come on. Yes. Okay, right. Uh, Alison Bishow said, women, shouldn't women be fussy, though, especially in if finding a life partner is serious? Um, let me come. I'm going to come. Hold on. I'm going to come to Johnny. Then we're going to go to Mr. P and then we're going to come to Tony. Come in, Johnny, because he, he had to stand up first. So well, I was thinking, um, I know last week, I think her name was Shalomi, right? Yeah. Shalomi was very passionate. And I believe some of the guys have said she's, she's picky. Um, she was very passionate about what she did not want in a man and what she would not stand in a man. Her her pat in her past she said she she dealt with with grown men who were acting like boys. So if you if you're dealing with grown men that, that are acting like boys, why should you and she's in her forties, why should you why should you go for that? And I had another comment and I was thinking about it too. Um and I and I want to ask this question to the brothers. Um after I make this statement, I want to ask this question. Um in every relationship, there's baggage. You have baggage, she has baggage. Are you man enough, are you man enough 
to help her unpack that baggage because she's going to help you unpack your baggage. When, of course, in the preliminary stage, we ain't talking about baggage. We're not talking about our past. Like, we're not talking about um, domestic abuse or, or just things that, you know, if you're a woman, you, you, you're, you're dating someone who's dealt with domestic violence and say, you're not, you're not the abuser. You're not that type. You've never put your hands, like me, I've never put my hands on a, on a woman, but I've had re past relationships where the women were uh, victims of domestic violence or molestation or whatever it may be. That's baggage. And that stuff sometimes don't come out, it might come out year eight in the marriage. I'm 16 years, it might come out year two or whatever. It's not coming out, it's not coming out but then the first six to two months to a year, that's the boo stage. So are you man enough, are you man enough to help her unpack her bags? And are you man enough to unpack your stuff? Because you got some stuff too. You got some stuff that needs to be unpacked. And, sh and, sh and if she's willing to help you unpack your stuff, you got to be willing to do the same. And that's what you know, the Bible says, dwell, dwell with your wife according to knowledge. So what, what this mean, what that means is you, there, there, there comes a time when you have to gather some information about your mate, right? And that, that gathering of the information is a lifelong process. And you're learning as they get, as they get older, they evolve, they, they mature. You, you might, you might receive a, a you know, you know, you that's an immature woman when you when you first meet them, and then as they grow, they get more mature. But we all have some bags that need to get. And sometimes, you know, we come into a relationship, and those those bags are just sitting right there in the living room. They sitting there, sitting there. I mean, how many times have you gone on a trip? How many times have you gone on the trip? Came back from the trip, and your bags just sat there. I'm talking about me. My bags just sit there for weeks. And I've I've come, I've been back from the trip two weeks, and I haven't unpacked the bags yet. We got some stuff that we have to unpack, but in a relationship, you're doing the unpacking and then you're doing the packing together. So that's my question: Are you man enough? Are you man enough to help her unpack those bags? I just have to say this: I'm loving your questions, Johnny. I'm loving it. And it's just making my job very much easier. Thank you very much. So guys, questions. I'm gonna come with Mr. P and then we're gonna open it up. I know that Galaxy X uh, Herbie is there with his wife in their, in their um, thingy as well. So Herbie's coming in to talk. Mr. P, unmute yourself. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, again. Yes. Um, I totally agree with Johnny. That's, 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 that's maybe now, but um, when I met my wife, I was like 16 years old. In fact, my, my, um, my father taught me a lot of things about women and he was, doing, he was a teacher and he was a, he's a, still about now and he's a, he was a damn good teacher, he was a good teacher. Um, I, was, I went to work and this guy stopped me and he said to me, you was, I know your I know your family and you're you're a nice guy and everything. I want you to um, meet my daughter. She's coming in from the plane, coming in from Jamaica on a plane, and she's going to be at this party. So, how was it to go to this party to meet this nice girl? I got her picture and everything. But you know what? When I got to the party, I was running with a a gang of guys. Then in them days, there was like twenty of us come to this party. And um, I said to, I said to the guys, in, I say, see that girl there in the room? And he goes, which girl? And I said, girl in the middle. That girl is my wife. And they said, what's wrong with you, man? You couldn't say that's your girlfriend. <laughs> and you know what? I danced with the girl that I was supposed to meet. I danced with her friend. <laughs> I danced with her friend that night. Not her, her friend. I fell in love with her friend. And I had a dance with her. I went to get a few drinks. When I come back, she gone. So I thought, where is, where is she gone? 
and they said that um, she had to take a flight to Canada. So she was off to Canada. And I waited. I was in a, it was in a church then, because my, my, my dad was a pastor. Mm -hmm. I was in the church playing the music, playing the drums. And I see this girl just walking in the church. I just threw the drum. I, I forgot what I was doing. But I knew that girl was my wife. And from, from there to 18 years old, buying a house together at 18, and my father coming to, to look at the house with me, and he took the key and said, I can't stay with her until I'm married. Two years later, when I'm married, that was my wife. And that's the lady I've been with all my life. So there was no baggage because we live together and whatever, if there's any baggage, the baggage is now, it's here, now. But when it, I hear you say when you, when you come from holiday and you leave your suitcase, well, I'm, I spent most of my time packing that suitcase and surprising the lady because I'm a romantic and so is my father. He's a romantic and so am I. So I spent more time um, creeping around the house, getting buying her a suitcase and filling it with clothes without she even knowing. And then I'll just say to her, girl, tonight is Friday night. I'm taking you away and we'll just go somewhere. Just an impulse, but she's always with it. She put it this way, to me, she never give no trouble. It's me get a trouble. <laughs> she never gave no trouble. You know, she's innocent. If anybody, if anybody knows me, they know I'll be the one that we're giving the trouble, not her. She's just easy going. And I've had an easy going life. Um, I'm not a person that, I'm not a runner. I don't run go nowhere. And a lot of men are running away. I don't run away. If I'm playing cricket, I'm the one that's hitting the sixes and the fours because I'm not running nowhere. If anything happens to the lady, I'm with her 24-7. I'm with her. If she's got an issue, she talks to me. If I've got an issue, I talk to her. That's how it is. You know, it's not perfect because we do have some, when we first got married, and I believe that um, I should, I gave her a credit card and I said to her, lady, whatever furniture you want, you buy it. You want to buy a fridge, cooker, whatever you want to buy, your bed, whatever you want to buy, you buy it. You want to buy a settee, anything you want to buy, here's a credit card. You go to town and you buy whatever you want. Because I believe that if I'd gone with her that day, I might, she might not get what she wanted. Because I might say, oh, I like that, or like, I left it totally up to her. And those 30, that's 38 years, some of that furniture that she bought is still in the house. 38 years later, it's still in the house. You know? So, no, that's his love. Love is blind. But marriage is a high opener. <laughs> ah, I see, I see some of the guys, the ones who are married, like, yeah, they're nodding, they're nodding, they're nodding, they're nodding. Um, Herbert, are you, Herbert, are you Galaxy S6? Or S, yeah? Are you there? Do you want to come in on the Zoom? Because I know you're in the Zoom room, but you're messaging on here. So you can. Ladies, get ready to come in. Get ready to come in to, to, to kind of do this thing. So, you know, Saf is saying, when you know, you know. I actually liked the um, terminology that, that Johnny used about having the suitcase you've got to unpack. Because sometimes, and I know as somebody like myself, I travel quite a lot. And sometimes the suitcase, when you have, sometimes I come home and I've, I'm running into something new. So I don't even have time to unpack the suitcase. And this is literally, so I kind I get it in terms of um, having this, this metaphor of how things are as people that we have stuff in our, we have some junk in our trunk and we, sometimes we, dismiss it or we put it to a side because we we just don't have the capacity to deal with it and then throughout the relationship that's when it comes um and so you start to unpack it and, and this is something that guys you need to be aware of um, and it's not that the person has changed or they don't know what they want maybe they haven't had the time to unpack some things so in relationships we have to give each other the space 
and the room to, to work. Just as you've got stuff, that person might have stuff too. So I am, there are, there's so many questions in here. I, I, I really don't Ron, can I just, un, can yeah. I just unpack that? Yeah, go on. Very, very quickly about that thing with um, unpacking luggage. Sometimes your luggage don't arrive till you get to 40, 30, 25, 35. So it's all very well saying, I've seen some people saying, unpack the luggage before you get to the next relationship. Sometimes you don't know what the luggage is going to be until you get to a certain age. I agree. Yeah. Totally agree with you. Totally agree there. Yeah. Carry on. Um, a lot, I, I absolutely love what Tony said there. And, and that's the thing. If you have the ladies, if you have the luxury of being single for a long time, that is the time to unpack your luggage, right? Men, if you have been single for a period of time, that is the time to unpack your luggage. And, and as you go along, you know, and we, we don't want people with, you know, we say these, we don't want the people with luggage, but actually, if we're honest, the, the chances are, especially if you're going into a relationship later on in life, there's going to be some stuff. It might not be a lot, but there's going to be a bit. You, you might have a little t-shirt and a little shoes and a little sunglasses in the suitcase that you all forgot that was there. You have to deal with that, but you have to deal with that in a way that's conducive to your relationship. Theo, you look like you want to come in. Yeah, it's just it's a, but um, all that's about growth as a person before a relationship. It's not even about relationship. It's about you growing as a person. So I know it's about relationships, but if you haven't, if you're not willing to grow as a person, it doesn't matter how many relationships you go into, you're gonna still end up in the same situation because you haven't grown. So you haven't taken your bad faults. So whatever you left from the last relationship, whatever the reason is, if you haven't tried to address it or correct it, you're going to go and do exactly the same things. It's like, like doing maths. You know, they said five and five is 10 and you keep writing 11 because you can't bother to change it. So when you go into the next relationship, you're going to still be writing 11 because you haven't tried to grow. So that's what, that's what I was saying about honesty and integrity about the women. A lot of women don't want to accept that they've done something wrong. They I'm perfect in how I am. Look at me, I look good. But your personality, or you haven't tried to develop yourself or improve yourself. You know, it's always the emphasis on the man to always be better, to grow up. But a lot of women need to grow up because they still have they still have same issues they had when they were in the twenties. So that the lady that hasn't been in a relationship for a date for twelve years, she has to look at herself and says what is it that I'm doing or what is it I'm giving off why guys are not asking me on dates or whatever it may be. Because it must be something about her not growing up because she's, she's, she thinks that she's set and made already at, at where she's at. Okay, Theo, you are very welcome here, my brother. <laughs> I, I like your train of thought. This is to get us talking. Herbie, you're going to come in? You got something? Come and say what you've got to say, Herbie. Thank you for being here, Herbie. You're not on mute. I don't think you're muted. Go on, you can speak. No, I don't think, Herbie. I think, is he frozen? He might be frozen. Okay, come, jump in, Tony, quickly. Ladies, let me just tell you, the Zoom room is now open. So I just wanted to address um, a point made by who was it? Kim about some men don't want to unpack their stuff because they think they're too old to unpack. Um, I don't think that's the case. I just think that you have to be patient with some men because some men don't want to unpack everything straight away. And I have seen in the past... I mean, I've only been single a year and a half, yeah? But in that period, I've had a few women that I've been introduced to and that I've, that I've had dates with, and they kind of want to unpack everything too quickly. They're like, really? Calm down. Okay. i got a lot in my, in my bag. My bag is huge. You know, I'm, I, I like to 
you know, I tell people, you know, I've, I, and so I've been told off for it. I, I got to, I, I've been too worldly. I've been around the world and I, 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 you know, literally visited every continent, done everything, explored loads of different religions, um, been married twice, got kids and the whole shebang. So I'm a worldly guy. I will happily unpack my life story to anybody. And, you know, Yvonne, you've, 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 you've interviewed me. So you can tell, right, this is what Tony's about. He's this kind of guy. He's done this in his life. And yeah, he has a lot of experience. But don't try to unpack everything within the first month, two months, three months. You have to take your time with a man. Just the same way a man should take his time with a woman to unpack her. And believe me, a woman has a lot to unpack. Yeah? So it's just like, you know, you bring certain things to the table and you try to find the most important things in your bag that you go, right, okay, I like sun cream, you like sun cream, great. We like R&B music, you like R&B music, great. I like reggae music, you like reggae music, great. We've got that going on. I like traveling, you like traveling, great. And all of a sudden we've got this great bond because these are wonderful things that we think are important to us that we can agree on. But then you start to unpack the little things, as you said, the, the, the little sunglasses that you didn't realize you had in the bag and the this and the that. And that takes a long time. And you have to be patient when you're unpacking. That's my bit done. Thank you very much. Thank you for your contribution, Tony. Listen, the ladies are coming in. We've got Ruth Carter coming in. She's already in. She's in. We've got the, oh, the here they come, here they come, here they come. Right, we're coming in. Herbie, you're there with miss, with your missus. Hello. Hello, lovely people. So whilst people are coming in, hi, Lorraine. How are you hi. doing? How are you doing? Put yourself on mute. Um, Herbie and Michelle, do you want to come in and just give your input to the conversation so far? Unmute yourself. Hey. <laughs> Hello, good hey. evening to you both. Are you okay? Wonderful. Good, good, good. Um, I was just listening to what was being said about um, unpacking, you know, um, the luggage. However, I think sometimes the luggage can be so full that some things spill out and fall out of your luggage, out of your bag. And, you know, sometimes it's about, um, you may not have wanted it to fall out at that particular time, but it has, and it's dealing with it because now it's fallen out of your luggage. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes you want to take the easy route or the slow route or do it, um, do it in a manageable way. However, that's not always the case. And you can't just shove it back into the luggage. You're going to have to deal with it because now it's out. So that's what I was just thinking about. Sometimes you want to take your time, but sometimes it just doesn't allow you to do it that way. You know, because um, me and Herbie, we've been married 34 years. Huh? Yeah, 34 years. <laughs> and um, met at school, you know. And I think when we first met, for me, it was love at first sight, really. Um, you know, I, I just knew in my heart that he was for me. Um, even though he went out with my school friend, but let's not get into that. <laughs> but yeah, so, you know, four children later, three grandchildren later, you know, we're still together, still doing our things, still, you know, but I think somebody mentioned about, you know, um, like knowing, knowing, you know, yourself and knowing and growing as you get, 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 get younger as you get younger you start to learn you start to change things you start to adapt because you don't stay the same it's just impossible to stay the same so you you continue to grow and you continue to learn about each other <laughs> yeah and, and i'll just add on to that um a lot of um a lot of negotiation you know a lot of negotiation you have to you always have to negotiate okay. things things change um, you can have the, the greatest intentions or greatest plans and it changes, you know. Um, 
you know, a lot of the men we know that women are some women. Some women, women I should I say? <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, the, the the Venus and Mars Mars thing is, is definitely true. Different different planet. Yeah, I'm not saying it's a it's it's an, you know there's some wrong, anything wrong with that, but we're different. And um, what he done yesterday, and worked yesterday, men at work today. So um, you've got to get the routine of negotiating, and 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 don't. I've tried, yeah, to try and work it out, and um, you know I would say okay to a certain extent you can, but um, yeah, it's not it's not a working out thing. You know what I mean? Um, sorry, my eyes are burning me. <laughs> Um, okay. yeah, you have to come in. Well, thank you guys for your input. My uh, question to you is, is if it does spill out, how do you deal with that? Especially in the early stages of a relationship. Before you... I've got John, you've said the same thing. <laughs> I'll just see what you said. It's <laughs> got in my head. It's great. But my thing is, is, is Shalomi in the group? Is Shalomi on Facebook tonight? Because Shalomi, if you are in Facebook, I would like to invite you in to the Zoom room, please. If you are here, the link is in the thread. And there was somebody else. Um, is it Faye? Because Al Alistair Bristow, um, I think there was a comment saying that they were too, somebody was too um, picky. Um, but I want some of you ladies to come in. Desmond Edwards, um, if you'd like to come into the Zoom room as well, I'm going to start calling out your names, right? Because you guys have got lots to contribute to. Josh Francis, Josiah Fr Francis, um, I know that you put yourself on, uh, you're still there. Are you in a car? Are you, are you traveling somewhere? <laughs> okay. All right. So whatever input that you've got. But guys, there is space here. Ladies, you're quiet tonight, man. Normally, you've got loads of things to say, but ladies, the, the Zoom room is open to you tonight. So, um, we have lots of people watching. So, guys, so I just want to ask how, if you have a lot of stuff, and I know that some people are uncomfortable with the, the metaphor or the analogy of having the, oh, we've got another man coming in, um, of having the baggage that that whole thing of the baggage or, or the suitcase full of stuff but actually i'm going to say this if you're feeling uncomfortable i am going to say that it's probably because there is baggage there that you need to deal with i'm just saying and 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 it's nothing to be ashamed of we all go through this it's a process of life we work through things at different stages and different paces of um of of what we're doing so don't feel no way that i'm saying this but you know this is something that's been evident it's come out it's something that's come out in this conversation that there may be baggage and so it's something now especially for those of us who are single to deal with personal development is real and it's needed so um you know i i want the ladies who have just come in which one of you wants to go first? So we've got Lorraine and we've got Ruth. Which one of you is coming in? Ruth is coming in and then we'll bring Lorraine in, then we'll bring Theo, because I think Theo wants to come in. All right, Ruth. Good evening, Ruth. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Great discussion. Great discussion. It was lovely to hear the different perspectives of what men want and you know because i'm sure because the ma married the men that are married are experiencing know exactly what they want so getting a lot of positive feedback from them you're right tony you know for for our learning and growing and we've got tony kelly on theo josiah you know it's just been great feedback johnny i know johnny I went to his house. I was like, I know Johnny. So it's been amazing. So it has answered some of the questions, you know, but where we are right now with this luggage thing, I'm definitely one for personal development. I think it's very, very key to working on yourself. I've been single now for the last two years. 
um, from my previous relationship and it's time for me to reflect. This is my reflection time. This is my healing time. This is my growth time. This is time for me to figure out, work on me, love me more, have a clearer picture and direction and identify the needs that I have, one, what I can give to someone else because I'm really about creating a vision, a life that is going to take me from here in my 40s to my grave. So that means I'm looking for commitment. And so, you know, I know people are talking about marriage and I grew up in the church and that is really how it should be. But not everybody wants to be married. But I do like to engage in long-term relationships that are fruitful, that are beneficial and productive for both parties. Do you know what I mean? It's just would be nicer if they lasted a bit longer. Um, so I've said from my story from the beginning, you know, you'd have to go back and watch the videos, but where we are right now looking forward, it's about growing with someone because I am growing. I'm caring. I'm because I am caring. I'm loving. So doing the love languages and all what we've done and talked about has been really useful for me to get a clearer picture. And it's a man that I want. Man, M-A-N, man. But a grown man, a man who is loving, who is caring, who is kind, who ain't wishy-washy. Do you know what I mean? I've had abuse as a child. I've worked on that stuff, coaching, counseling five times. But you know, it's not a bad thing. It's something that we do in life. I'm a, a mother, I'm growing children up. They're now young adults. They're becoming independent. So there's still a lot of things to do. But for me, I know where I am and I do want to contribute positively into somebody's life. So yeah, that's my few words. Thank you guys. I'm just letting more people into the room. Uh, Michelle and Herbie have now gone separate, have they? Okay, so Michelle's talking from a woman's point of view, I suppose, and Herbie's talking from the male. Thank you, Ruth. It was very, very clear as to what you want. Very, very clear. So we're going to go over to Theo because Theo was waiting. And then Lorraine, we're going to come into you. Okay, Theo. You can unmute yourself. There you go. No, I was going to say go to Lorraine first because I wanted to hear what Lorraine had to say, okay. but she's gone now. She's, she's gone now. No, she's back. Okay. Lorraine. <laughs> All right, unmute yourself, love. There we go. Hello, can you hear me now? Yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, boy, I think Ruth said it all really i thought to myself oh my gosh she's leaving me with nothing to say <laughs> um but i mean what do i want in a relationship the thing is i've i've said it from day one as well for me everybody knows friendship is important to me because for me that is when you're getting to know somebody properly i can't i can't be in a relationship with you if we're not friends first and same as ruth um, personal development is important. I feel like I learn something new about myself every single day. I mean, I am somebody that people turn to in a crisis and whatever, because they, they see me, they, you know, you see my social media, everybody knows what I've been through and they see what I've, what I am like and how I've come through the other side. And so therefore I don't believe that, that I, that, everyone brings baggage into a relationship because I think it's important to try and deal with that first, deal with the baggage. I, if I've been with somebody that's, I don't know, that cheated on me for five years, I can't start another relationship with that still hurting or still on my mind because it's not fair on the, on the new partner. So yeah, I don't know what to say at the minute. I had lots of things to say, but I, my book wasn't next to me and it is now, I should have wrote it down before. But yeah, come back to me a bit later and I'll, and I'll have more to say. Okay, thank you, Lorraine. Leon Dixon, um, get ready to come in because 
you're in the Zoom room, we don't sit in the Zoom room, we, we are here. So after Theo, I'm going to bring it in and then we're going to bring in some more of the men. So Theo, come in for me. No, I just wanted to, um, like what Ruth, Ruth said, Ruth pretty much said it about women with a purpose. So she's reached 40 and she now has a clearer idea of what she wants. Yeah. And, and I think, as I think it must have been Tony, when you're younger, you're, obviously your ideas change of what you want and your outlook on life changes as you get older. So congratulations to her being Michelle for 34 years from school. That's amazing. That's, that's, that's very rare, I should say. And Mr. Was it Mr. P? Mm -hmm. And Mr. P as well. Those, those relationships are rare because people mm -hmm. change, but obviously they've changed and grown up together. Because I can say I've changed from when I was a young man to where I'm at now. So it's about people actually recognizing that you are going to change. And I think it was um, Tony was saying about coming in and getting to know each other first before you start unpacking your stuff and people getting to know you because you have to get to know the person before you start telling them everything about who you are. Grow, make a relationship grow together. Basically, just grow something together first. Yeah. So you start becoming friends, get to know each other. You know, just grow together before you start unloading everything else. Because everything else, it will come out in time. And sometimes when you're in a relationship, those things, what you was holding on to doesn't really matter anymore. You kind of just get rid of them because you realize it's not important. You know, as, as I think it was Lorraine that just said, you know, maybe you had a guy that's cheated on you for five years and you held on to that. But you've gone to a new relationship now. You realize this guy is genuine or he's looking after you well that five-year relationship is no longer important. And it's about looking forward. And a lot of people don't like to look forward. I have a thing where I say on the radio, too many people live in the rear view mirror and don't, and don't look forward. And if you drive your car, looking in the rear view mirror, what's gonna happen? You're gonna crash. And then you're gonna keep, and then you also miss opportunities because you're too busy looking backwards. So it's about looking forwards and looking onto the new venture, a new person coming to your life. Look at it as a new venture. Look at it as something exciting and see what they have to offer because you don't know what the person has to offer. But because you're looking at the faults, you're not looking at the positives. But can I, can I just make a very quick addition in them, Yvonne, to what Theo was saying, is that women have this uh, way of bringing things back from very far back and feel if you want to come and, and, and back me up on this one, yeah? If something happened 25 years ago, something small can trigger that memory from that 25-year-old occasion and bring it right up to date. Talk to me, Theo. <laughs> yeah, 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 true, bro. <laughs> so true, so true, so true, it's so true. It could be anything. It could be anything, and it, it always, and that will always be the um, where the anger comes from or the frustration. And you're like, that happened five years ago, and you've even forgotten about it. But they keep bringing it back up, so that's like their compass starts from there, from that point. No matter how much years later, it's it's ridiculous. And you can't grow, you can't grow, you can't grow if you're going to keep holding on to something like that. That's like a that's like a root, or 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 you know, it's bushes or what they call it, thorns. It's gonna stif it's gonna stifle and eventually that's gonna break you up. Because all the positives around that, if you're gonna keep holding on to that negative situation or something that's happened, you ain't gonna go anywhere. So so can I just come in here? Because uh, yeah, we'll come in in a minute. Just so that I've got an understanding, because I'm not sure that I am understanding this. So are we are we talking about something? Been in a relationship, hold on, someone that's been in a relationship and has something's happened and then the person's bringing something up constantly. Or are we talking about someone that's got baggage from another relationship and is bringing it into a new relationship constantly? Are we talking? No, no, no. So it's not baggage. It's just... It could be it could be termed as a trauma, yeah. Something happened in a person's life, mm -hmm. one a one-off occasion, and guaranteed not well. Yeah, it, it it can it can take a small trigger for you to unleash the wrath in a woman because she's gonna bring back that event. One single event can come back and and become a big issue. 
and it could be from a previous relationship or it could be from the existing relationship by the beginning of the relationship so for instance 16 years into my relationship with my wife she could bring up something from our very first year that honeymoon period and go well you did that and i'm like raw <laughs> i didn't realize that was still applicable tony can I, can I say something um can i just jump in that tends to happen for people who hold on to things like they hold on to all information irrelevant it doesn't even make sense on why you would hold on to that but that people like that do have past traumas that they've never really dealt with so at any opportunity it's like boom it goes off but people like that because i don't want you to think all women are like because they're not but particular people and men do this as well but people Particular people hold on to all information, like they're making a record of all your wrongdoings or everything that would, so that when the time comes for another event, they will present that and you'd be like, wow, that happened all that time ago and you've done forgotten all about it. Only certain people do that because they would rather waste their time holding on to the misery instead of living in the present in their life currently now being free, happily doing whatever you want to do in your life. So I just wanted to add that in, because I know people like that, women too. But those particular women had issues, like serious issues, all grown and never dealt with it. That much I know. So, you know, I even get asked questions. Oh, did you say that? How the hell am I going to know what I said four years ago, word for word? Because I'm living moment to moment. All my moments are recorded in my memory. If I need it, it will come. But I'm not making no record. I'm living my life. Can I say something as well? So, hi, even everyone. So, Johnny mentioned before about, um, yeah, baggage. Some people have baggage and you're, you're there with a partner to support them and help them grow and get over it. Like your partner might have baggage and you might have baggage. And as a couple, as a union, you can work together to get through that. So that comes, so when your partner who you love is, is traumatized from something, it's not for you to throw them away or have an argument with them. It's for you to sit down and work through it. So I've come on here because, yeah, I've been single for a long time. and I've done a lot of work on myself. And what I'm finding now is, that I'm meeting people who aren't at the same stage as me. And I haven't got time to help you or coach you with your baggage either. So straight away, I'm dis I am dismissing them. I'm, I'm talking to them, but I want you to have done the work as well. So it, it's, it, so now when I am, yeah, I'm dating and someone um, has traits that I don't like or still struggling from past relationships, I will dismiss them. So yeah, that might be a reason why I'm still single because I'm, I, I'm not in a place that I want to coach someone. That's my job. I don't want to do that in my personal life as well. So yeah, that's why I thought I'd come on and yeah, just, just yeah, to share that. Um, yeah. Thank you so much <laughs> for that. I just want to say, and yeah, Kim, you can come in next. I just want to say, in listening because I'm kind of like listening and trying to, to work all this going on but I do want to say that the same things that the men are saying about women is the same experiences that women have too. Men bring their baggage, men bring their trauma and behave abysmally at times yeah and uh, this is going from people that i coach in their relationships this is friends this is family these are p things that i have seen so when we are talking we need to broaden it out and know that we have both male and female got the same complaints we both what we want to do now is find the solution to move forward so kim is going to come in first then mr p then lorraine because i'm seeing hands go up so i'm going to bring kim in kim come in for me darling
Can't hear you, Kim. Oh, you can't hear me? Can you hear me now? Okay, sorry about that. Um, I was really kind of miffed with the um, terminology luggage. We are traveling through life. So what, do we need a passport and a visa as well? And do we kind of make negative connotations about those? Oh my God, Kim came without a passport. You know, typically in relationships, we come with something. Okay, when I go to Jamaica, I just carry one little bus up leather bag. That's the bag that I carry. And customs will look me up and down and ask, well, is that it? That's what I have. But impacting that is a huge amount of problems, which I've learned to deal with and cope with. And I have mechanisms that I know I can put in place to work in a relationship. My partner knows me. He's known me for 30 years. Right. So he knows every little last kind of nuance. Um, how would you say I'm, I'm thinking of the wrong word? I can't think right now, but I'm very mindful of the fact that life is a journey. And if we're working through 30, 40 years of different things, trauma, racism, um, relationship issues, bereavement, children, um, children growing up, parents, teenagers, the death of, of elderly parents, it's not just one thing that impacts a relationship because we're talking about it as if it's a one and one situation when you're in a long-standing long-term relationship you're in a almost an extended family because you get to know your partner's family you get to know their issues also so i'm saying all of this that we 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 use shame a lot in our in our community Oh, why the girl not have a man for X amount of years? What? Mm, what? What wrong with her? There's nothing wrong with her. Do you understand me? What? I'd rather see someone 10, 12 years without a relationship than finding out that this person did something totally negative and and destroyed that man's life. And I've met women that have done that too. Same works. It works the other way. Why do we have to shame each other based on the fact that a person has chosen not to? engage in um, interpersonal dynamics that could be harmful to them and that's the, that's the danger of playing a relationship game the per the other person's very good at it you know when you play someone at chess and you're shit at chess but they're really good at it that's how relationships can sometimes be i don't view luggage as something negative i view it as a necessity we have, we, nobody's walking through customs without a visa, a passport, and a, a suitcase. It's just not done. On your journey, you will bring something. That's all I want to say. Thank you, Kim. Thank you for the, ex the expanding on, on, on that and how you feel about it. I think I, what I don't want to do is get so ca too caught up in, in that. But you're right in terms of what you said. I understand what you said, and I thank you for bringing what you brought. Mr. P, are you coming in? And Perita saying she agrees with you. Um, you. There's a lot of love. I think we. I think how we speak, the language that we use, we have to be mindful that whilst we're happy to say X, Y, Z to the other person that's hearing it and perceiving it it is not as clear cut so we want to increase and improve the way that we are communicating with each other mr p come in good evening um ladies and gentlemen um the thing is right the solution right is um once you know your partner and you know your partner good i, I know the lady from from back 16 she was 16 years old when i met her to the 30 odd years that we've been married um there's there's a there's there's things in your life you're going to want to do you're going to want to move forward with things so i want to start a business my, my father was a businessman my little brother is a businessman and i'm a businessman so i want to start a business right and so the first person that you've got to be telling about the business is your wife your partner she's got to be for me she had to be in agreement with what i'm doing because i'm not going to be at home all the time i'm going to be at the business so she has to be in agreement 
and she was in agreement and me and her it's our business and we did this business together for 21 years that door shut and i went up the ladder a little bit into you could say i got into government now so i mean I'm, I'm a government person now so i'm in the government but i couldn't get there without the love of my life i don't do if i'm choosing anything if i'm buying anything as i said the porsche is coming uh, that is coming but when i got to get it um the lady's got to be there to make she has to be in agreement too because it's her money too you know but when it comes to money the the, the money is for both of us whatever we're doing in life Whatever her goals are, she can use money. And whatever my goals are, we use money. We use money together. Love is together. You know, I hear a lot of people saying a lot of things. And, and Ruth, girl, in the time I've been on this platform and seen you, Mrs. Ruth Carter, you're a nice girl. If I was single, that's different, you know? And I know I could sweep you off your feet. I know I could do that. Because that's another thing about me, and a lot of thing about a lot of men. A lot of men are confident. And if they're confident, there's nothing holding them back. And a lot of these ladies out there, they know that you're not confident. If you're not confident, they don't want you. You know? It's not, I never had no baggage. I never had no car when I met the lady. I was riding a bicycle. Now I've got two cars on the drive. And as Tony, as um, Theo said, sometimes it's adding things on, you've got to add things on to her. I made sure that she could drive, I could drive, and I made sure she could drive as well. So not only that she's driving to work, but I'm driving to work. But we all work together. You work together for good. It can only be good. So ladies and gentlemen, as I said to you once already, the person that the person that you're falling in love with, she may be walk past you in the street and you not even see her. You're looking somewhere else. But the time will come when you find that person. And this time next year, if this platform is still here, it might be a completely different set of people. And Tony, don't give up, brother. None of you give up. The ladies are out there and the men, the, the men for you and the ladies for you are out there. And you're gonna see them soon, yeah? I'll be buying a new hat and a tweed suit soon. <laughs> ah, you didn't give me jokes you know, Mr. P. You're giving me so much jokes. Theo, come in, come in, Theo. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I just need to ask this question. When Patrick needs to buy the suit, please come and see me, because I am a qualified tailor. I do run my own uh, business. It's called Taylor's Roll at Taylor's Roll on the gram, on the Insta, whenever you want the suit. Okay. Uh, I'll I, 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 I take a note of that. I'll take a note of that. I need a tailor as well, so. There you go. So you're getting business on this platform, Taylor. <laughs> I want some commission, thank you. <laughs> right, go Theo, what are you saying? Um, so if you're gonna look at this from a relationship, so if somebody's in a relationship, most men in here will tell you, it's a, they say compromise, but it's mainly the men has to compromise. Because what we'll say is, what most men will say is, happy wife, happy life. Mm -hmm. If your wife's not happy, your life's not happy. So as, as Mr. P says, he looks after his wife. So make sure she's happy because I'm not going to say all well, guys, but most guys, we like an easy life. We want it easy. We want to come home and chill out. We want to watch the TV, do what we want to do. But that's not going to happen if your wife's not happy. So that's the compromise. So if she says we have to go here, we're going to go there. No matter what I say, we're going there. Because we, we can put up a fight, but at the end of the day, we know it's going to end up with we're going where she wants to go. <laughs> we can argue left and right, but we're still going to end up going where she wants to go because we know what's going to happen. Even if we don't go and we say, we, say we've won that discussion, she's not going to be happy. Mm -hmm. So it's about compromising. It's about give and take. It's about give and take. It's about give and take. But a lot of the times, most of the times, a lot of men, we just, we give up. We just say, we just give and say, you know what? We're going to go. We're going to go with what you're saying because 
I see Mr. Pete shaking his head. So I, I need to hear from his experience because he's been married much longer than me. So yeah, but that's what, that's what I've learned anyway in my relationship with my wife. So, and other relationships I've had that it, it makes it easier if I just, if I go that way. So maybe I'm just, maybe I'm just too easy going. I don't know. <laughs> Okay, right, so I can see some hands. So Lorraine, I'm going to bring in Lorraine and then I'm going to bring in Michelle. And then we're going to come for Josiah because I think that Josiah's got something to contribute. He's been quiet, but you've, you've been out and come back and, and now you're here. All right, so Lorraine, come in, unmute yourself. And then Michelle, then Josiah. And then, oh, Mr. P. Hello. Go for um, this evening, I've noticed a, a, a little bit of a pattern with the men. When they talk about what they, from their experiences, they keep saying, women do this, women say that, women, women, women. But when they're talking about a man, they say, some men, some men do this, some men do that. So they are generalizing all of us women as one. That's what, you can shake your head, Tony, but I'm sitting here listening and all of you have done that. Johnny's done it, Theo's done it, Tony, you've done it. The only person that has spoken a lot and hasn't generalized women is Patrick. So I wanted to point that out first. Secondly, going back to women, women, not saying what they mean. We, we're not all like that. Because like Yvonne said earlier, she's not like that. I'm not like that. And there was plenty of women in the group that said they weren't like that. But from my experience, uh, the men that I've been with, and that's not very many, do not, they say that I am too independent or too confident if I speak my truth and say what I mean. And say a lot of men, not a lot of men, because I haven't been with a lot of men, but from my experience, I think some men actually find that frightening. That's what I wanted to say. Can't hear you. Hold that thought. Hold that thought. Michelle, come in. That's a really good point, Lorraine. Michelle, come in. Um, I was just listening to what was saying, um, being said about happy wife, happy life. It's a choice. You know, if you have, you know, um, if you can communicate with your wife or your partner, whoever it may be, it's about not compromising, but it's saying, well, actually, I prefer to go here um, instead and we can go there next week. It's a choice. Everybody has a choice. And if you choose to go down the route of what your, you know, your partner's asking you, then that's your choice. It's not, you know, if you've got a kind of a relationship where you can talk with your your um like like with herbie if herbie um if i suggest we want to go somewhere um and he doesn't feel that we should go there maybe we could go there another time or another uh, on another day it's a choice you you talk it through well okay then all right then we'll go next week it's it's a, it's a choice it's a it's a conversation it's, the, it's about communication it's not a general statement happy wife happy life because at the end of the day it's a happy wife also a happy husband it works it works both ways that's how I see it you know I don't force Herbie to do things that he doesn't necessarily feel really he wants to do if he chooses to do what um, I've, I've asked or suggested then he he chooses to do that everybody has a choice you're not hold you know held with um you know a leash it's your it's your choice you choose to do what you feel you need to choose what you want to do and I think it's all about the relationship our relationship is open. Our relationship, um, you know, I'm not saying it's, it's perfect. We don't argue. We discuss things a lot. We talk four times a day. But that's our relationship. That's how we are. Oh, this thing didn't work out. I've lost them. You've gone upside down, Michelle, or sideways. Okay, but thank you for your contribution. Uh, Josiah, I want to bring you in. Johnny, I want to bring you in. I know Tony wants to come in, so I want to give everybody a bit of a bit of space. But let me just check the time as well because I do need to. I've actually I'm going to speak because in four minutes 
we need to log off of the www dot because this does stream on uh, the radio as well so what i would like to i would like to just come in and say what uh, just um further what lorraine was saying in terms of um the experience of of the approach of men i know for myself i'm very clear very very clear as to the type of man that i am looking for to to come into my life i and the reason why i am very clear is because I am ex what I am expecting to give to him. I'm expecting him to also have something to contribute into my life too. Now, what I find, because I am very clear and because I am very direct, I, I speak my mind. There's no ifs or buts, it's A, B, C, X, Y, Z. Very, very clear. What I find is that a lot of men are intimidated or feel a way because I can articulate myself in that way. So I, I just want to kind of just put that out there to you guys so that you hear what I'm saying because you know I run my own business, I, I'm on the radio, I sing, I do, I make my own money, I've got my own home, I do stuff, right? I can see Theo. So yeah, and I'll bring you in. Um, so this is like some men are saying, but there's no room for, for him. But actually, that's on him because there is room. The thing is, yes, I am single, but I'm of an age. I'm not 20. Even though I look 20, I am not 20. And so I've had life experience, right? So I'm 50, I've just turned 51. So by now, I'm supposed to have stuff. I'm supposed to be able to hold my own. I'm supposed to be able to say, this is my yard, this is my car, this is my business, this and this and this. I'm supposed to be able to say that. But what I find is, is that certain men that I have come across would prefer it that I dumb myself down. And I'm not prepared to do that for anybody. I'm just not prepared to do that. So my question to you guys, married and single, is what advice would you give somebody like most of the women in, 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 on Facebook now who are of the similar ilk to me? They've got their own house, they're doing their stuff, they're running business, they're and they're forthright. What is your suggestion? And I'm just going to say this. Thank you guys on the WW dot for joining in on Conversations Start After Dark. We will be back here. We will be back here next week between the hours of 10 and midnight. If you have any questions, you can email me at info at yvonnemichelle.com or you can contact me on uh, Messenger on Facebook. Any questions that you have in regards to relationships, please do let me know and we will ask the questions live on the show. Again, I just want to thank you for listening in tonight. We hope that you've been informed. We hope that you've enjoyed the show. And for now, we're going to say good night. Those of you who are on Facebook, those of you who are in the Zoom room, hold tight because we are just going to log off and then we are going to continue with the conversation. We will be right back. And we are back, there you go. Okay guys, where was we at? So we do this every week because we always seem to run over. So we are, guys, we are at 12. So we are at the time. So what we're gonna do is, I am gonna give it another 15 minutes to half an hour, and then we're gonna cut it, and then we'll come back next week. And, and then we'll do the women and the men come back. But this conversation has been very, very interesting. This conversation about us unpacking stuff and working on ourselves. So before I go anywhere else, I'm going to bring in Josiah because I did want Josiah to come back in. Uh, because Josiah, I think you are the youngest person here. So we want to just get your point of view from the, on the conversation. So let us know how you're feeling. Okay, it's been very good. I, I like the way the evening and the conversation's gone. 
from being a few people guys earlier to like it's like so mixed now and I enjoy hearing people's stories and experiences as well and there's a few things I wanted to touch on and I think I'll go with baggage first because baggage growing up is generally known as a bad thing me growing up running the streets baggage don't want I'm not interested I don't want no baggage but I think now as I'm older and growth myself baggage is not a bad thing depending on what it is so whereas before if I was dating a girl and she had a kid and there was issues or she had issues with the baby's father I'd be like not interested but now I can deal with that it's not baggage to me do you know what I mean so I don't think baggage is necessarily a bad thing or baggage is it's baggage it's just something you gotta deal with it's not does that make sense? It's not necessarily baggage to me anymore. So people say baggage, baggage, and everyone's got baggage. It's not necessarily baggage. It's just something that you've got. And if someone sees it as baggage, then that's on them. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. They can't tell you it's baggage. Someone else might see it as something, yeah, that's cool. I can work with it. Do you know what I mean? So not everything you have or someone brings to you is baggage. And if you feel it's baggage, then that's you. Do you know what I mean? So... That's what I think. That's the way I look at things now. Not everything's baggage. If I feel I can deal with what someone's bringing with me, I'll let them know. If it's too much, I'll let them know. But it's not baggage. It's not, it's not a bad thing. Do you know what I mean? Does that make sense? Yeah. I think, think like, the terminology of baggage has been deemed something quite negative. But if you, mm -hmm. think, about, if you think about luggage as it is, luggage, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's luggage that you carry and you have to carry it and it's heavy. And then you've got the luggage that's got wings. Mm -hmm. And then you've got yeah. the that's got wheels. It's only got two wheels, which mm -hmm. is not as easy to manoeuvre as luggage that's got mm -hmm. two wheels, right? You know, yeah, yeah. Like, mm -hmm. I think it's about how we perceive things, uh, mm -hmm. how we how we take things on board. And I, I mm -hmm. like the way that you're saying some things are you would see as bad. You used to see it as the thing that you wouldn't want to get involved with, but now you're more mm -hmm. open, and and that's what maturity does. That's mm -hmm. what life experience does. You handle things differently. So mm -hmm. I'm really pleased to hear you say that. Now, I know that mm -hmm. been up. Who, there's many of you that want <laughs> to come in and say, so what I'm going to say is, let's keep our responses really short because we are out of time really, but we just mm -hmm. want to wrap this up in a nice enough fashion. So Herbie, I'm going to come. Okay. Um, Thank you for that, Josiah. And then Johnny, I see your hand up as well. Theo, I saw your hand up as well. So we'll go those one, two, three, then we'll bring in three women and then we'll do it that way. So just make your responses really quickly. I'm gonna, you can unmute yourself, Herbie, and come in. Where's Michelle gone? Michelle? Okay, um, can you hear me? Can you all hear me okay? Yeah, you're good. Yeah, I just sent a message. Um, yeah, j just to say, just on, just on the baggage thing, because I like, I like the analogy of the baggage. Um, when you have people have baggage, yeah, as a suitcase, and they have their, their stuff in the suitcase. Sometimes the back, sometimes it's, some things are just not used at all. They're, they're, they're there and they just stay dormant. Yeah, normally it's a environment or something that activates or something changes that that baggage is used or the item is taken out. Yeah, um, so sometimes it just it's just the way it is. Yeah, so you go on holiday. Yeah, and you have a, a rain jacket. It doesn't rain, it never gets used. Yeah. In life, things change. The rain starts, you take it, that, that, that it happens. You know what I mean? As someone said earlier, um, I think it might have been Kim, you know, various things um changes your change the relationship, you know, deaths, marriage, people, you know, it just changed. You know what I mean? And you have you have to adapt. And we can adapt to it. You know what I mean? We can, we we're able to. Um, but again, I think as my wife was saying that we got to, you have to sit down and have a conversation about it. There's no point trying to <laughs> brush it under the carpet or, or, or leave for another day. Just, 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 just deal with it. And sometimes it's, it's not easy. It's sometimes can be painful, and sometimes things have to be brought back up. And as um, Tony was saying, you know, about things being brought back up from the past, the reason why because they're not being, they're not a lot of times they're not being dealt with. You know, what I mean, they've just been there. And then, you know, I mean, it was just blown over and it come back up again. If something's dealt with and dead and put away, buried, it shouldn't really rise. But it's, it's, it was never sorted out. It was just sort of like, yeah, 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 yeah. And then it come up again. 
I, I'm going to be short. That's it. That's, that's me. That's me. Thank you, Herbie. You hit the nail on the head. Absolutely hit the nail on the head. Johnny, come in. I just wanted to um, address what Lorraine said um, about the men and how they said some things about women. I believe I spent a considerable amount of my time talking about myself, talking about my things. Um, and I do that because I don't, a lot of times when I talk, I don't say some, I, I say me, because I always have to keep the finger pointed at me because I know what I have. I know the stuff that I came into my relationship with my wife with. Um, of course, I'm not an expert on women, but, but the, the thing that I do know, and I think I, I you know, alluded to the fact that early on, you know, my perception of a woman was, was not such a good perception because of the molestation by the older woman when I was 12 years old. So my perception of the type of woman was begin to form, you know, form my thinking. But as I began to evolve and I knew exactly what the type of woman I wanted, a godly woman, I wanted a godly woman and the Lord gave me that. But there were some things as, as my relationship started with my wife started to evolve there, there. And I think Tony, Tony talked about triggers. And there's some things, even roots. I think Theo talked about roots. There's some things that's hidden. You can cut, you can cut the top of the the plant off, but then the roots are hidden. And I think Michelle talked about the the things that fall out the bag that you didn't expect. There's there, there's and and baggage is not a negative. I didn't use the baggage in a negative way. I mean, there's some negative baggage, of course, but there's also some positive things. But then you have to be willing. You have to be willing. And, and I think uh, Yvonne talked about, you know, what kind of advice I could, could I give to the singles? And so you have to be willing first to take a risk. You know, yeah, I mean, and, I mean, Josiah said, okay, in my 20s, I probably wouldn't deal with a woman, with, with the child, with, with the baby father, all of these different things. But now I'm more open to it because he's more mature. Um, so there are times when, you know, you have to, some of the ladies I'm talking to, you have to be willing to, you know, take a risk because yeah, that, that man might come with some stuff and you, you might be completely established, you know, have your own stuff, you know, and it's the complete opposite. But then as we know, in these times, brothers are getting a bad, they're getting, you know, they're getting the short end of the stick. I mean, the, the, in, the racial injustice contributes a lot of times to, and we're seeing it, I'm here in the, in the States, of course, we, you know, not too far from here, we're protesting, you know, we're protesting racial injustice. And, and the criminal justice system has been set up to, to, to bring our brothers down. I mean, and I think T uh, Tony talked about it uh, last week, you know, the, um, the, that slave mentality, that say, slave trauma, a lot of the things where they, you know, our men were taken out of the families. And it's, it's, it's right now, it's just legalized. It's legalized murder, legalized this, and, and all these th different things that are going on, you know, some men just don't have a chance. Even if they tried, they don't have the chance. So a lot of times, if you want, if you want a strong brother, you might, he might come with some stuff and it wasn't his fault, but you have to be willing to take that risk because there are some brothers out there that just didn't get, that got the short end of the stick and it, it was not even their fault. They were in the wrong place at the wrong time. And then all of a sudden they doing 10 years in prison for something they didn't even commit, for a crime they didn't commit. And I mean, of course, that, you know, that's room for another show. But at the same time, you know, you have to be willing to take a risk. You know, if he's not, if he's not, if you have your stuff, if he, if you see that, I'm not t telling you to look for a project, but there, there are some brothers that just didn't get it. They, they you know, didn't have the fortune because I could have ended up in prison. 
because I did commit a, I committed a crime, but my, my charges were dropped. And so that's by the grace of God that I'm here talking to you successfully, uh, can say that I spent 30 years in the U.S. government, you know, this, that, whatever, and I'm, I have children, I have a wife, and, and these things happen, but it's not the same for everyone. So I just wanted to make those points. Love you guys. Thank you so much, Johnny. I saw Lorraine's hand up. Thank you. Thank you for your honesty. Thank you for being so direct and bring it. You know, you've raised some really good questions tonight. So I do hope that you'll be with us next week when the women come in and we have our discussion and then the men come in because I do feel that, that there's much to learn and to glean from you. Thank you so much. Um, I saw Lorraine's hand up. Theo, your hand was up before. Um, Tisha's hand is up. So let's go. Just, just do it quickly. Lorraine, you're looking at me like your hand wasn't up. <laughs> Are you coming in? No, 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 it was up, it was up. I just wanted to say quickly um, on what Johnny said about taking a risk. Um, many years ago when I worked in a hair salon, I was doing a lady's hair, an, an elderly lady, um, and she told me she was celebrating something like her 50th wedding anniversary. And I was like, wow. And at the time, I think I was probably in my 20s. Um, and I was like, wow, how did you put up with the same man for 50 years? Like, I could have murdered someone and been to prison and come out and you're still there with the same man. Yeah. And she said, Lorraine, you must learn in life that your ideal man has half a foot. And I said, what do you mean? She said, none of us are perfect. None of us. We all have our faults. And your perfect man has his fault, and you must learn to accept it, appreciate it, and live with it. And I just wanted to say that because it's right in what Johnny said in taking a risk. None of us are perfect. We do all have our flaws. And maybe some of us are looking for perfection, and it does not exist. So we've got to learn to compromise, not settle as such, but we do need to look for that half foot man or half a foot woman. That's it. Thank you, Lorraine. Theo, come in. I um, just want to address the point. I like that, Lorraine, half foot man, half foot woman. Yeah, I, I did the same, so I, I fully understand that. Um, I wanted to address the point you were saying about about you, especially Yvonne, about having about having everything, you know, radio show this that, and you're saying guys are intimidated. It's not that guys are intimidated. Guys are. I think someone's put in there is like, where's the space for me? Where do I fit into your schedule? Because you're doing this, you're doing that, you're doing this, you're doing that. So where's the time that we're gonna have together? Because you're gonna have to sacrifice one of those in order for a man to come in. Because if you're working sun, Saturday to Saturday or Sunday to Sunday, when is the time we're going to spend an hour here and an hour there? Or there's no time to cultivate a relationship. So the guy's like, you know what? It sounds like you're so busy. You don't really need me. So I'm going to keep it moving. It's not that, we're in, not that the guy's intimidated. Some of them guys might be, but I'm just saying, when I hear it, because I know lots of women in that same situation that got everything, and I said to them, so where do you expect the guy to fit in your schedule? Like half an hour on lunch on a Tuesday, let's make a date for half an hour here on a Tuesday, and then maybe Thursday evening at seven o'clock, I've, I've got a slot here, you can slot in here. And some guys don't want to be a slot in somewhere. So that's, that's, what, I'm, that's what I want to put out there. So if you're saying all this, you got to think to the guy, if a guy said that to you, I've got all this, you as a woman, what would you say? You know, I'm working 12 till 12. What would you say? Where's, you're going to say to yourself, where do I fit into that schedule? That's all it is. Sometimes you just have to check your schedule. I, I, would, I wouldn't assume that there was no time because a lot of it is based on assumption and a lot of it is based on what they perceive. So, um, for instance, we're on social media. We're on social media now, right? And, and so social media has the perception that things are more elaborate than what they really are and so for me what i would like is a, a man to actually ask the question do you not 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 make the assumption well you look busy 
or well you you've got everything together because that's the perception that they have that may not be real in reality so and and that goes across the board for a lot of women who are active and they're doing their business blah 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 at the end of the day there's always room people make room for what they want so if there is a man out there that is that i want i'm just gonna put it plain if there's a man out there that i want i'll make time i will make time for any man that i'm interested in that shows interest in me but if you are if you are mousy mousy and you can't come forth then that tells me that maybe you're not the one for me because i'm looking for a man i'm not looking for i'm not looking for a little somebody that that's a, a mouse i'm i'm looking for somebody that i can feel secure with and I, yes, I have a mouth. Yes, I'm, and I've said it, I am forthright. But there is a time when I like to sit back and say, okay, baby, I know you've got this. Because a man, for me, a man is supposed to be a man. That's, 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 how I, that's all I know. I don't know it any other way. The man is supposed to be the person who protects. The man is supposed to be the person who, who brings that security generally and i'm just because he told me straight and i'm generalizing because don't get me wrong i will go toe to toe if i have to because i've had to do it does that make sense so because i've had to do it i'm not scared of anybody but if my man is there and my man is like it's all right babes i'm like i'm cool with that I'm very happy to sit under his arm. I'm very happy with that. Very, 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 very happy. But it doesn't happen because the perception is, oh, she's all this, she's got this and she's doing this and she's out there and she's talking and she's singing and she's doing, that's, that's what I do. It's not who I am. And there's a difference. Does that make sense? Okay. Right, who's coming in next? Because we've got a few minutes left. Tony wants to come in, then Tisha come in. Okay, unmute yourself, Tony. Okay, wow, amazing show. Thank you very much. Everyone has contributed. I mean, it's been it's been amazing listening to all your views. Um, I'm just going to touch back onto what you just finished off with, Yvonne, and that is to do with well. What does a woman want and how do you address the woman who's, who's got it all? Um, but do I have that it? I've, I've had That's something that... Do so, I have it all? Yeah. You see, there was, there was a comment earlier in the chat which was about men being intimidated by powerful women and women um, being intimidated by powerful men. And... Um, going back to a point I made to Lorraine in the chat, just to, in case you missed it, Lorraine, I make a lot of generalizations. Um, so yeah, everything I say is general, but there are some, uh, there are obviously um, exceptions to the rule. A man generally does not like a too powerful woman. Generalization. There are some very submissive men. Yeah, they want their woman to walk all over them. But a man generally likes to wear the trousers because i know in my family if we got 20 blokes in in a gathering the man whose woman is controlling him is getting a ribbing because we're gonna tell him you come in your skirt i see yeah because we know you left the trousers at home <laughs> yeah so generally men do not like an intimidating woman or a woman who, who is all about that and generally is going to be like, I got all my shit together and da 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 pardon my French, um, because we want to be in some way wearers of the trousers. And that's, you know, I'm not saying I'm that guy, but I'm making a generalization. I'm definitely the guy that says, you know what, we both wear the trousers. Yeah? But a lot of guys get intimidated by that. I, I see it all the time. And it's something that happens from youth. It's a cultural thing, yeah? It's a cultural, it's something culturally inbred to black men especially. That you know what, be a strong black man. And then you know that phrase, man up. Nobody ever says to a guy, woman up. We always get man up because 
this is something that is, is inbred in us as a culture. And you'll realize that now, anyone who's into psychology, we're taking away that phrase, man up. And there's a reason for that. And, as, and that becomes part of the demasculization of the man, especially of the black man. That we, some of our men aren't manning up because they're actually saying, you know what, I don't want to man up. I just want to be, you know, part of this and I don't need to be a man per se. So we got this demasculated man and women are going, I'm looking for a good man. And this man ain't stepping up because he hasn't got that in him. Whereas the older generation, we've got that in us innately. We was, we was brought up a way that we should be the man, wear the trousers. Yeah? Our fathers in, and our grandfathers were the men. And, and the woman, she went and she did what she did. But we all knew who the man was. And as I said, it's, not a, it's a generalization. It doesn't apply to everybody. But that's the way it was. And that's the way some of us look at life. So I'm of an age where generally, yeah, I, I want somebody who appreciates me for what I am and who I am. And I'm a man who wears trousers. So I've got my shit together. Yeah. However, I'm willing to take on board a woman who's got her ish together. And we grow together. But please understand, generally, men like to wear the trousers. I'm done. That's very interesting. Very, very interesting. Um, I, I wouldn't expect the man to wear a skirt. I'm just saying. That's not the look that I'm looking for. <laughs> at all. I'll tell you, I don't mind a man in a kilt. Uh, in a yeah, in a kill on a special occasion, you know, get a bit of breeze blowing, that would be a few bit jokes, yeah. But uh, yeah, but I am not the woman who is looking for the man to wear the skirt. No, 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 no. I think that, that let, let Patrick talk because Patrick has a view on this. I can see him dying to say something, and he's yeah. a man that is. I'm just gonna respond, I'm just gonna respond to you first. Um, because I think it's, in, it's important that it's said that I think that there is a perception that if a woman is um, forthright and has her ish together in her work, right, that she wants to be in control. That's my, what I do is my job. That's my job. So when I come home, I'm coming home. I'm not coming home to work, the job. That's, that's what I do. I'm a CEO in my own company. That's my job. When I come home, I'm your boo, I'm your girl, I'm your, I'm, you know, I'm that, I'm that girl when I'm home. But when I'm out, I'm a different, and I'm at work, I'm, I'm in the CEO. So my husband, unless he's, he's a CFO of the company or something like that, or working within the company, that power struggle is not supposed to happen. It's not. Because that's what I do in my work. When I'm at home, I'm at home. And I, when I come home, I want to come home and be in my joggers, my this, my whatever it is. I want to be chilling. So it's the perception of what we want. And the reason why I brought this up is because there are others who are doing different things, different relationships, different friendships, different jobs. And there's this perception that we all have of each other that is stopping us, hindering us from moving forward to what we actually want. And we have to remove those issues, remove those barriers now, because we are actually creating those barriers ourselves. And that is what I wanted to touch on. And it, it just so happened that the conversation came up in this way. So don't look, I'm saying, um, um, Tony said who he is, and he's been here from day one. So we're kind of getting to know Tony on a level. All of us are getting to know Tony on a level. Ruth's been here from day one, we're getting to know Ruth. Mr. P has been here from day. We're, get, we're getting to know. Teacher's been here from early on. We're getting to know. Let us not judge people by what we think they are, but actually ask the question and get to know people for who they really are. Because this is one of the reasons why we are probably single. Because we have come to these assumptions that, oh, that person over there is that. So he's not for me. Right? 
when actually if we took the time to get to know the person in their own personality not what they do but who they are then we might be moving in the right direction tisha you had your hand up come in and we've got four minutes left okay so that's a quick one i've noticed um previous calls we said about getting to know someone really quickly saying what we want really quickly to get yeah just get it out of the way and then today we've had conversations about getting to know someone taking the time so there's some conflict there and also a bit of conflict again with uh, johnny uh lorraine like yes i understand P um yeah get to know someone they might have um they might have had struggles or whatever but my thing is is i always yeah i always trust someone and feel that we're moving forward and then the next minute they're with someone else or i'm the other lady so it's it's a catch-22 i'm trying to be open and get to know people and i'm very open i'm very I'm very straight with what I say now that I've done the work because I'm sure of myself and I think that comes with age. So again, I think the gentleman earlier, when you're younger, you are a bit unsure about um, saying what you really feel because you're, you're not confident in yourself and whatever. But as you get older and do the work, you are more confident. And now I won't put up with, yeah, I'm trying not to put up with stuff. But at the same time, I am trying to give people a... Um, What's the word? Yeah, just to be more open, but it's the same. I'm yeah, creating the same pattern. So yeah, I'm just saying a bit of yeah, conflict there. So my situation is I am trying to meet someone and be open, but it's a, a pattern what keeps on being repeated. So yeah, it's yeah, it's very difficult, and I'm just seeing a lot of conflict there. I'm not getting any clearer, and that's you know, I'm really trying to learn from these amazing conversations. So yeah, thanks, Yvonne. Okay, so Tisha, next week the women are coming in, we're going to have a conversation and then the men are going to come in. So we're going to have that open and candid conversation of how, what we experience, because mm -hmm. we've heard them and then on the, the following week, we're going to mash it all together and see what, what we can glean from this. We've got some really good, strong characters in our Zoom room. Kim, I'm coming to you. Um, we have some really strong men in our room. We've got some really strong women equally. So I think between us, we're gonna come up with some really good strategies of how we as the single ones can move forward and start to actually meet people who are in the, the right, I don't wanna say the right people, but are more suitable to us where we are. And I think that's both male and female. Uh, where's Kim? Kim, come in now for me, darling. Um, what I had wanted to say to Ruth was, um, I am a great believer in reliability. Um, if a person is reliable, then I can actually work with that. So if a person tells me, and that goes for male and, and female, or man, woman, trans, whoever you are, if you tell me you're going to do something, that is my expectation. I'm not a person who works very well with, yeah, you know what, I'm coming in at nine and you roll over at two o'clock in the morning. I don't do that. I really respect a person who can actually um, back their chat. You know, so if I see a pattern of behavior where a person tell, tells me that they're gonna do something and they consistently do not, that's a, that is a red flag for me. I will work with a green flag anytime. Right. So, yeah, person says you say to somebody, you know what, I am going to the thrift shop. I need you to pick me up, um, help me come pick up this piece of furniture. And they turn up on the time that I ask them to turn up. Boom, we're good. But I can't work um, with in an unstable person. To me, that's instability that you can't even. Uh, and, and obviously traffic um, things happen, etc. We are living in. Um, I mean, over here in the US, and I, I was on one of the protests just recently. So I, I get it. I get that we're under a lot of pressure. But your words should match your actions. This is part of maturity. Okay. You say, you, when you go to work, you say, you know what? I'm going to come to work. I'm going to be there at nine o'clock. Be there at nine o'clock. And the same works for a relationship. We all, it's an ongoing dialogue, right? So if you say you're going to call me at a certain time, do it. It's really simple. I just wanted to put my 
Yeah, that, and that's a great point. And and I would just say that most, I'll say most women, I can't talk for men because I'm not a man, but most women do are looking for stability. You hit the nail on the head, Kim. You know, if you say you're going to do something, you know, do it. You know, end of. If you're running late, call and say, I'm running late. You know, if, if something's happened, let the person know. You know, these are the things that, you know, these are the red flags. These are the things that I, I'll just say, I don't have patience for. You do that a couple of times, see you later, bye. I don't, if you waste my time, I'll waste yours and your time will belong to you forever, end of day. There you go. But that's just because of who I am and what I do, I suppose. So um, we have come to the end of the show. It's 11, it's actually 12.32. So we've gone half an hour over. Um, and I want to thank everybody for being here. Did you guys get anything from this? Guys on Facebook, how are you feeling? Yeah, did you get anything from it? This, these sessions are here for us to grow. Yeah, we, we don't just want to be sitting here just chatting. We actually want to get something out of it. And this is growing. Now, guys, the show... I told you about the TV show, right? It's going to start in July, all right? We're restructuring, we're doing, so. I don't know how, we're looking at the structure of how the show is gonna be because this show here is so nice and it's so organic. I love it here. So we're gonna try and do, we're looking at a spin-off kind of thing from that show to lead to this show, for this show to lead to that show. So it'll be like a brother and sister kind of relationship. So that we're working. So if you guys have any input, you want to say anything, um, do let me know. Um, but I'm looking to start that and it will be on, it will not be on this channel. It will be on Medianet live TV. Um, so we are looking to do that for July. All right. So I just want to thank you guys for joining me. Those of you who are on Facebook, thank you so much for all of the input. Um, there's just so much. I have missed Veronica today because normally Veronica will flag up what people are saying and then I can just say this, that and the other. It's a little bit difficult, all these messages coming in, but we are working through it. So guys, next week, same time, 10 p.m. to midnight or slightly over. Um, and the women... The women are coming in the Zoom room. Men do come in because we are going to um, have you in uh, an hour in, an hour into just like today, an hour in. So you'll be listening to what we say and coming with your responses. We want your responses on Facebook, but we also want your responses in the Zoom room too. Guys, I love you all. Thank you so much. Mr. P, I know that you've been at work and you shot home from work to get here. So I want to thank you so much for being here tonight. Johnny in the States, thank you so much. Kim in the States, thank you so much. I didn't know you was in the States, you know, Kim. I didn't know. But thank you, Josiah. Thank you so much. And do you know what, Josiah? I'm going to say because I actually called. I actually called my son to come in, but he's like he was working, so so he couldn't come in. So do bring some other young younger men in because it would be really good to get your perspectives as well. And I'm going to try and bring some younger women in as well. You never know. You might like see somebody. I like them. Who knows? Right. And this is what it's about as well. So for those of you who are in the Facebook, who are looking for partners, you're, you know, you're only holding yourself back by being in Facebook when you could be on the Zoom where people could see you and say, oh, she's nice. Oh, he's nice. Give yourself a chance. Come on now. Give yourself a chance. So, guys, Theo, thank you so much. We've got our, our um, respect, Johnny. Johnny, legend. Legend. Everybody, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Love you God guys. You, Yvonne. Thank Peter. you for let, allowing me to be a part of it. it, Listen, it was great. Up, brother. Big up, enough respect. Stay safe, brother. I think the mic yeah. for the men, we have to drop the mic. I still have to get a new mic. We've got to drop the mic. I think drop the mic has, has got to be Johnny tonight. He dropped some. Yeah, yeah, he did. Tonight. Um, so who gets the golden mic next week? We don't know. Lorraine got it last week. So who's going to get it next week? We don't know. But you know what? We'll be here next this time next week. Thank you, guys. God bless you. Be safe. God bless you. Thank God bless. God bless. Bye. Take God, care, bless. Everyone. God bless you. Bye-bye. Thank bless you, guys. Be safe. Everyone. Stay safe, Johnny.
Stay safe, stay safe everybody. You guys, stay safe. Stay, stay safe. safe, Johnny, man. Look bye after yourself. Bye, Kim. Bye, everybody. All right. Bye, bye everybody. Man. Lessons, bye. Man. Bye, 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 bye. Tony's Taylor's. I got that. Yeah, Tony's Taylor's. You got it. See you later. Tony. Ciao. Ciao.